The Power of Innovative Thinking Chapter 1. Thinking About Thinking The significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking that we are at when we've created them. Albert Einstein What is thinking? In today's fast-paced, continually changing business world, you need powerful thinking skills to make decisions quickly and, more importantly, effectively to become success successful. You must know what and why you have to think the way you do and how to use your natural thinking abilities to your best advantage. If you keep thinking the same old way, you'll arrive at the same old conclusions and leave you behind well-worn, rutten business as usual decisions. Trains must go where the tracks lead. They cannot follow an unplanned route. Similarly, if you always think along the same tracks, you'll probably arrive at the same destinations, but you use the helicopter for your journey, you will not be limited by the tracks. The power of innovative thinking will assist you to making better decisions by helping you better understand your thinking abilities. In addition, it will give you the tools to effectively solve problems. Specifically, after reading the insightful of this motivational book, you will be able to 1. Reduce negative thinking barriers. 2. Avoid one-dimensional thinking. View old problems in a new light. Uncover the opportunities in every problem. Think more quickly and accurately. Avoid falling into common thinking traps. More successfully from idea to action to success. Find new answers. Discover your own thinking style. Make better decisions. Thinking is a conscious use of your minds to reasons. Deliberate, debate, predict, reflect on any subject, but better understanding why humans think is the way they do is to learn how to approach each problem in the way that lead to better decision making. By smoothing out the ruts that have formed in the past, you'll be better equipped to rethink your responses faced with new problems and opportunities. You don't need to be a victim of doing what has always been done. Emotions versus thinking. Our brain gives us sets of two messages, one of thinking, one of another's for emotions. Our eyes, our ears, nose, taste buds, sense of feel, produce sensations of pain and pleasure that tend to rule our actions. For example, you may have planned to, you may have planned to spend an evening with your family discussing next year's vacation. As you arrive home, you never invite you to play tennis after dinner. Logically, you know the vacation plans are more important to your family. However, you receive a lot of pleasure and sensory reaction from playing tennis with your neighbor, a conflict that results between your logic and your emotions. And perhaps your manager has been giving you the job of streaming a production line to increase productivity. After a lot of work and thought, you know the best alternative is to install new equipment that will result in laying off three people. The people who you know will lose their jobs are your friends. The logic part of your brain tells you the correct action. The emotionally, you avoid hurting your friends, though the years have learned to conform to both written and unwritten rules that lead to your success in personal life. If you want to be successful in your business decisions, you have to resolve the conflict between emotion and logic. Resolving mental conflict. By resolving the conflict between logical thinking and emotion, you gain the insights into how to think different ways. Most of what has been learned to come from people influenced such as parents, teachers, peers, friends, the learning that has produced filters that may distort the information we receive. For example, when we were children, we were taught that other people should keep their promises. Our value filters want, to, want us to believe that people in business's world would keep their promises. Logically thinking, good practice warns us, get it in writing. Or perhaps you grew up next door to immigrants from the country of Baldavia, not a real country, but they were rowdy and lived like slobs. As a result, when you meet the Baldavia work, your filters automatically pin and label that person to a rowdy slob. While we must be sensitive to the potential negative effects of filters, they can be beneficial. Filters allow us to sort information and discard what is not important. Imagine what would happen if you would have had to remember all that information which was confronted each day. Whether forecast news, family plans, sounds of ear to the car, the radio while driving to work, your appointment schedule, your associates' appointment schedules, and information about your company's new products, as well as the competitors' new products, all drawn your attention, confronted with the onslaught of information. Filters help you highlight which items are important. The three types of filters that influence your thinking are... Filter number one, your subconscious filters, your values, your culture and heritage, and your religion. Number two, your survival filters. Number three, your social filters. Number one, your subconscious filters. Subconscious filters automatically open the door to our values, culture, heritage, religious background. We do the right thing because our unconscious filters tell us to do the right thing. For example, if you are a, thir are a thrifty individual... You may be cautious about the waste of your organization sources or uh, how your organization sources are used. While this value may be an asset to the loan officer, it would be a liability time to decide how much money to spend on research and development. Or just suppose you feel in people with green noses are lazy and unreliable, therefore you reluctant to hire people with green noses. However, your personal value system may be in conflict with employment policies regarding to, discrimi to discrimination issues. The, this conflict has never been more important than now, since the Equal Employment Opportunity Acts and Americans with Disabilities Acts affects personal decisions. Some cultures recognize special holidays, for example, salespersons from the East. East Coast 
might find customers unavailable and they if they plan to make sales calls May 5th, Cinco de Mayo in the Southwest. Those unfamiliar with Patriots Day, state holidays from Massachusetts would encounter similar frustrations. Purpose, perhaps your religion unbringing has taught you the Sunday the day of rest, therefore your business remains closed on Sundays. Customers as who normally work Monday through Friday may be looking for your product on the weekend. If the competitors are open on Sunday, you lose potential revenue. If your if your religious beliefs are stronger than your desire to increase profits, you will remain closed on Sunday. Your unconscious filter controls your business decision. Trigger words. When we hear certain words or phrases, messages from some conscious filters can trigger emotions. It may be a name of someone we dislike very much. Words we call that pleasant experiences, new and improved, audit, customer service, or overtime are typically examples of words that trigger certain emotions. When we are aware of these trigger words, we can control the filter, monitor feelings, and rethink the issues. Becoming aware of the subconscious filters. You can become aware of the subconscious. You can become aware of the subsequently take control of the subconscious filters by answering the following questions. Ask someone whose insights you trust to review your answers with you. Number one, values. What values do you describe to with a passion? What values do I subscribe to with a path with a passion? What does my company value? How might these values complement each other? How might the values conflict? How can I resolve conflicts between my personal values and my organization values? Number two, cultural heritage. What behaviors are associated with my heritage and culture? Which behaviors do my associate customers, clients display in my mind indicating their heritage and culture? How much do I resolve differences between my own and others' cultures heritage that affect my thinking? What positive and negative reactions may my culture heritage prompt from others? Number three, religious backgrounds. What are my religious beliefs? How do these beliefs help or hinder me in my business relationships? What positive or negative reactions do my religious beliefs prompt in others? Number four, trigger words. What are some trigger words that stir my emotions and interfere with thinking abilities? What specific emotions are affected by these trigger words? Number two, survival filters. Human beings have been built in survival filters to prevent sensory overload. Sound filters, for example, usually prevent us from hearing sounds that aren't important to us. To become aware of how this works, sit quietly in a comfortable place. Close your eyes and listen. Do you hear the motor of the computer? Do you hear the hum of a laser printer in a machine? The phone ringing in the distant office? When you're focused and concentrating on your work, you usually don't hear these sounds. However, suddenly noises are different frequencies. Your telephone ringing or your colleague calling your name almost grab your, intention, grab your attention. We always have memory filters that serve our autopilot, that let us perform routine tasks while we are subconsciously or consciously thinking of something else. For example, memory filters allow us to drive home while we're thinking about what to have for dinner. Learning how new tasks and such typical operating machinery requires such thought and concentration. But once we're skilled at the task, we no longer need to think through the steps. They become automatic. Memory filters are time savers that can cause us or make us mistakes and miss opportunities. For example, Brent, a well respected electrician in a factory could fix anything but the problem is Brent could fix the power cord on a machine moved back and forth needed to be fixed at least twice a week Brent could see this insulation around the cord was always broken in a different place without much thought he would work on his magic on the cord and the machine could could be used again fixing the cord become a habit with Brent rather than thinking through the problem he just fixed the cord his memory filter was working one evening the shop supervisors were working overtime and saw the real problem Brent had failed to see the insulation on the power cord was a treat was a treat for a family of mice when we were solving problems and making decisions we need to check them memory filters once in a while to make sure that we're defining a real problem using survival filters to your advantage survival filters can be an asset to your career if you know which tasks should be routine and which tasks should be more on concentration list the tasks that you perform frequently consider your following questions so that you can improve the way that you use your survival filters number one what tasks do i routinely perform without much thoughts number two on which of these tasks should i focus on more attention and why number three which tasks should i learn to perform in a routine manner Number four, which steps will I take to recognize when a task requires more concentration considering the following? Have I always solved problems in the same way? Are my results always the same? Do others come up with better results? For example, answering the telephone whenever it rings has become a habit for many of us. We answer the phone even if someone in our office is talking to us. You could improve your communication skills by examining the sound filters. Do you need to answer the telephone just by because it's ringing? How do you think it makes your visitor feel? Can you ask someone else to answer the phone or use a voicemail if it's available? Number three, social filters. Our social filters determine how we behave at work, home, and our careers. At curtain, they contain an unwritten or a written or an unwritten rules that dictate on how we act different situations. Social filters tell us what we should do. For instance, 
when we meet pe people socially, we usually call them by the first name. In business settings, every we usually title respect a person's last name until we're given permission to do otherwise. Consider, do you answer the telephone the same way home office as you do in the office? Do you answer the, the telephone the same way at home as you do in the office? Do you greet visitors at work in the same manner when you do welcome people at your home? Do you prefer, do you prepare your office budget the same way you prepare your personal budget? Thinking about social filters. To help recognize your social filters, answer the following questions. Number one, how might your behavior differ from meeting an unfamiliar child selling candy at your front door opposed to meeting a child of an association at work selling the same candy? Number two, how would you respond to an offer to an attend a major sporting event with your supervisor versus the same one of, the same one offered by your brother-in-law? Number three, how would you respond differ from someone requesting a charitable contribution at your home versus the same request from your business associate? Number four, how would you behave differently from your own significant other asks you to lunch versus a business associate of the opposite gender versus for lunch? When, when can you recognize the appropriate behavior and use your thinking skills to similar situations? You will be in a control of your own social filters. When you have a better understanding of your subconscious survival and social filters, you can take control of your thinking skills. And when you're able to control your thinking skills, you'll be able to be an effective, you'll be able to make more effective decisions. Framing when your subconscious survival and social filters interact with your desires, goals, aspirations, and make a frame of reference, your frame of reference or framing influences that's influences the decisions you make and how you respond to the challenges. The following figure shows how this picture might look on your wall if you were to think of framing as a picture frame. Framing. Subconscious. Survival filters. Social filters. Your subconscious filters, survival filters, and social filters all arrow together to your desires, goals, and aspirations. Understanding your frame of reference gives you the greater control over all your end results because you'll be able to separate your logical thinking from your emotions. Understanding frames also gives you the insight in how other people think and react too. Anchoring. While framing provides a picture frame, it tends to define boundaries, anchors, point forms of a reference. Both framing and anchoring can restrict your thinking. For example, by adding only one line, change the following picture so that it has a value of six. Most people see Roman numerals as one and six, but because they're made of straight lines, people tend to anchor themselves to a concept of straight lines. Then look another line and another straight to solution. You can also be in curved that the answer to the problem is just to add a curved line to the Roman numeral one and ten, and it's a six. But anchoring also can help you, for example, let's say your manager tells you to send a memo to employees for your department to find out who's available for work at any time. The key word is memo, employees or department, available or overtime, provides anchor points to reference because these anchors, you know exactly who your boss wants you to do. You, you know exactly what your boss wants you to do. Imagine the potential confusion and embarrassment if people were not anchored in certain business practices. When you tell an employee to entertain a visiting client while you finish an important telephone call. You expect the word entertain will create an anchor or an image or a certain acceptable business behavior if the employee has a different anchor for the word entertain than you do. However, the visiting client may be subject to juggling acts in a tap dance, anchoring others. To influence others, you need to have a starting point for communication. For example, when you tell your staff that you have a meeting to discuss next year's budget, you have an idea what will be taking on, what will be taking, what would you have an idea what we'll be talking about. However, if you were to tell them that you're going to discuss the effects of declining in price earnings ratios, non-convertible dispensers disbentures and availability of operational capital resources for the succeeding year, they would probably have no idea what's going to be discussed. When people start the anchoring, you can also communicate with them on one of three notes, a safe zone, an aha zone, or a danger zone. The safe zone is when you communicate information understood by both so other person is operating in a safe zone, anchoring in a safe zone. People are comfortable and they usually respond anticipatingly and respond as anticipated. If a topic is introduced and it's not understood by both people, you can remain in the safe zone only if the other person are aware of each of others' limits of the knowledge, the safe zone. Case study one. Roger is a financial wizard who knows all there is to know about financial accounting. Claire Marie is a computer expert who can make letters and numbers dance across her computer screen. As long as Roger understands Claire Marie's limited knowledge from accounting, Claire Marie is aware of Roger's limited knowledge in computers. The two can safely discuss how to integrate Roger's accounting work with the new software program. When Roger begins to talk about the contract accounts and price earning ratios, Claire Marie can become comfortable. When Claire Marie speaks on the bits and gigabytes spinning into the computer's RAM, Roger may become comfortable with the new software program. Each person has neglected to recognize the limitations of the other and has stepped out of the safe zone. As a result, communication will suffer or will stop altogether. Let each other know that you have limit. Limit, limitedness in that zone. The aha zone. The aha zone is when you move from people to realize how 
to know the information they didn't realize as they knew. You are now an aha zone. The pathway to an aha zone is to blaze making, is blazed by making associates build upon current information. The aha zone is when you move, is when you move what people realize that what they know of information they didn't realize they knew. You are an aha zone. It's when you move from what people realize they know to information they didn't realize they knew. You are an aha zone. The pathway to aha zone is blaze making new associates built upon current information. Case study 1-2. Diane, excellent administrator with a knack for getting most out of people. Consequently, she is asked to lead a committee formed to write a company's mission statement. Diane knew that she could influence people to work cooperatively. But she was worried that she didn't have the writing skills necessary to compose a clear statement. As the mission statement began to take shape, however, Diane realized that she knew more about writing than she thought. The inner excitement motivated her to successfully lead her own committee. The Danger Zone. The Danger Zone is a name, as the name implies, is a dangerous place to anchor when you're communicating. When you're anchoring in a danger zone, you hear phrases like, they're out of the environment, or that's a fish out of water, case study 1-3. Danny, the company's top salesman, was appointed by the CEO to the position human resources director because his excellent ability to get along with people. Danny knew that there was much to learn and he failed to analyze or realize how much legal information was involved with the job. Because of his lack of legal knowledge, he made hasty decisions that resulted to confusing and distrust among associates. Conversation about Danny usually started with, he's a nice guy, but... The content of the message you send in by others terminate the location of the anchor. By changing the message content, you can make people feel comfortable, instill excitement, and you can cause them to mistrust you or even stop communicating. The anchoring zone. The anchoring zone in a chart is anchoring zone, awareness level, and then the content of the message. You have the anchoring zone, aha. The anchoring zone, aha, into the awareness level is unaware of how much you know. The anchoring zone of aha of the awareness level is you're unaware of how much you know. The content of the message is known information. The anchoring zone, safe anchoring zone, the safe anchoring zone in the awareness level is aware of how much you know and don't know in the content of the message. Anchoring zone danger, the danger anchoring zone with the awareness level is unaware of how much you don't know and unknown information. The content of the message is the unknown information. Anchoring for successful results. When you make good use of your thinking skills, you'll know ahead of time when you want to anchor yourself and others. In case study number one, Roger and Claire, Marie, with respect to one another's ability as long as they remain in a safe zone, Diane, in case studies number one, too, has potentially to lead to successful future projects because she's gained confidence while working in the aha zone. In case study number one three, CEO plays Danny in the danger zone and the company was forced to suffer the consequences. Deciding when to anchor yourself and your associates requires a careful consideration of everyone's abilities. For example, when you need to make decisions, you'll most often successful start in your safe zone. Moving forward, the aha zone may produce successful results as it rewards people for their efforts and initiative. In the danger zone, strong leadership skills may be necessary to guide people around anchoring points. You need to know the information may be requested by others to make it readily available. Ask yourself what, what the people involved will need to know that they don't know now. Ask yourself what the people involved will need to know that they don't know now. The guide on your following page will help you decide where you want to anchor your communication. The zone that you choose depends on how much you know about the topic. Paradigms. Paradigms. Pronounced paradigms are a combination of frames and anchors that establish and define the decisions and actions at work. A paradigm is generally accepted system that makes rules for accepted behavior. Attitudes and actions are necessary for success. For example, the proper business attire, the most corporate offices in s is a suit for a man and dress suit for a woman. And there may be no written rules for the state of this policy. It's just understood the paradigm is called the business world has created its own rules. I of the appropriate zone. There's the appropriate zone, safe zone, the aha zone, and the danger zone. I am aware of what I know in the safe zone. I am aware of what I don't know in the safe zone. I am aware of what I know in the aha zone. I am not aware of what I know in the aha zone. And I am aware of what I don't know in the danger zone. And I am not aware of what I don't know in the danger zone. In another example, when Chrysler Corporation was financial trouble, Leo, Leo Coco. Leo Coca cut his own salary to one dollar. The paradigm included belt tightening for all employees. Leo Coco wanted to respect for his employees, so he changed his anchor of point of reference. He was no longer working for money, but for the welfare of the company. Thomas Watson was the founder of IBM. Once stated that there was only room for about 
five kids and computers in the entire world. Consistent with this view for his years, IBM focused on producing large computers. After losing most of the personal computer market to competitors, IBM made a paradigm shift, meaning that IBM changed its set for reference. The corporation had to rethink its position and meet the needs of buyers and become the manufacturer of PCs. Anchors. Anchors are located in frames. Frames are located in paradigms, and our anchors within a paradigm can cont be controlled by anchors within the paradigm. For example, in the business world, the paradigm may be encouraged to care for the needy, the frame by giving your employer's favorite charity, the anchor. There will be occasions when the paradigm will shift or change, forcing the anchor to change. For example, the paradigm. I've been working for the company for 10 years. My father worked here 40 years. The company takes care of us. The frame. Because I'm a hard worker and loyal to the company, I'll be taken care of. The anchor. We all succeed at the company. There will always be a job. The paradigm shift. Money Buckets Incorporated lost money for the first time in its history. There will be no pay raises. In some cases, we change our paradigm and the effects of our anchor. For instance, the paradigm. I've worked for an old standby for 15 years. Old standby pays well. It has its good benefits. The frame. Because old standby has good benefits, I get free Medicare insurance. The anchor. I never have to worry about sickness or injury costs because my medical insurance will be taken care of by the bills. The paradigm change. I've decided to take a job with my dream company because I've always wanted to work here. They've offered me a 15% salary increase. My dream company doesn't have medical insurance for its employees though to be a successful decision maker you need to keep your eye on the paradigm and be ready for the changes that may affect your anchor successful thinking and decision making within a paradigm depend on mental flexibility the thinking box the thinking box throughout the power of innovative thinking you'll meet the thinking box it gives you a chance to immediately personalize what you've just read you completely exercise in the thinking box will remember the information more easily and you'll be more successful in the tools and techniques you've just learned in, in the real world the thinking box in the thinking box top left corner personal life downward problem solving to the right growth up career personal life problem solving growth career Personal life. Identify the paradigms, frames, and anchors that affect your personal life. Career. Identify the paradigms, frames, and anchors that affect your career or your workplace. Problem solving. Identify the paradigms, frames, and anchors that affect you, how you solve problems. Growth. Identify the paradigms, frames, and anchors that affect your personal and career growth. In the center, it's the thinking box. Each corner of your personal life, problem solving, growth, and career, write and identify the paradigms and anchors of that. Summary. In your chapter, you learn about the conflict between emotions and thinking, subconscious, social, and survival filters, how to filter creative frames and anchors, the safe aha danger anchoring zone, frames and anchors within paradigms. When you understand frames, anchors, and paradigms, you can better understand your thinking style and learn how to make more effective decisions. In the next chapter of The Power of Innovative Thinking, you'll identify the primary thinking style. You will also learn pitfalls to avoid when you rethink your way of effective decisions. Chapter 2. Thinking Styles. Judgment and imagination can help each other if kept apart when they should be kept apart. Alex F. Osborne. When forced to make a decision, people take different mental routes to arrive at a decision. Like travelers, you may know, some take the most direct route to get where they are going. Others think of all the routes available, select the best one, and then go. Still others take the scenic tour and enjoy the journey. Some people just jump in the car and just go, driving very little thought of direction or the destination. Identifying your thinking style. To better understand the mental route of what you take on solving when solving problems and making decisions, you need to know your thinking style. Once you understand your thinking style, you'll be able to select the best thinking tools, techniques, and strategies to use different situations. The following information survey will shed some light on your thinking style. Choose either A or B. When a new computer software program is loaded on your computer, you prefer to A, proceed through the tutorial, or B, start using the program right away learning your own trial and error. 2. You prefer to A, vary your route to and from work, or B, always take the same route to and from work. 3. When dining out, you usually A, order the same foods, or B, order different foods mostly every time. 4. When taking notes during meetings and conferences, your notes are usually covered with doodles or neat and well organized. 5. When you travel by car to a distant city, you prefer to plan your route and stick to it, plan a number of routes and decide which one to go as you are on the road. 6. When you face with a number of different tasks you work together, you prefer to work on several tasks at a time or complete one task before starting the next one. 7. When required to learn new and difficult materials, you prefer to study one source of information, use different sources of information. 8. Your desk at work or home contains a wide variety of pens and pencils, one or only a few writing tools. 9. Your files and desks are arranged in a logical manner that most people would understand, or arranged in such a way that only you could find anything. 10. You prefer to associate with people who A. 
have many different and varied interests, or B, have an interest similar to yours. Add together the A's selected your odd numbers questions, the B's selected to even numbers questions. These choices represent an, adapt an, adaptive, an adaptive style of thinking. Once eight or more, you tend to use an adaptive style of thinking. Your tools are, th are three or less. You tend to use an innovative style of thinking. If your score is between three and eight, the situation usually dictates the thinking style you use. Neither the adaptive or the innovative style of thinking is right or wrong. The adaptive, the adaptive thinking style, the adaptive thinkers tend to follow established patterns, be well organized, focus on the goal, be pleased with the decision is made, be comfortable handling one task at a time, prefer to learn through one source. Adaptive thinkers are usually at their best with well-defined paradigm, meaning that they follow the rules of an established system. Adaptive things are usually satisfied only when a goal is reached, and they prefer to complete one task before moving on to another. They may get locked into an anchor that prevents them from making changes fast, but by being locked in by the offer stability during periods of change, the innovative thinking style, the innovative thinking style of a score of three or less previously surveyed indicates that you tend to be an innovative thinker. Innovation thinkers tend to use different ways to get results, appear unorganized, value the process more to be actual goals, prefer to continue the process rather than reach the goal, be involved in more than one activity or task at one time, prefer to learn through more than one source. While innovative thinkers usually work within a system, they also guide outside to look for answers. They may attempt to change the rules or redefine the system along the way. Innovative thinkers usually appear to be on the stand state movement and seem unorganized. They often get pleasure from while working through the process and may even be disappointed when the goal is reached. Many, many irons is in the fire. The, many irons in the fire was probably first used to describe innovative thinkers. Need to be the balance of style thinkers. Need for a balance of thinking styles. Need for a balance of thinking styles. You have to have a need for a balance of all thinking styles. To be successful in business, you need to be able to effectively use the tools and techniques of both innovative and adaptive thinking. If you're an adaptive thinker, innovative thinking techniques will get you out of the rut and always doing things the same way. If you're an innovative thinker, on the other hand, adaptive thinking techniques will help you get organized and more goal-oriented. Depending on the situation and the desired results, you will find the tools and techniques for each thinking style can be beneficial to you. For example, when you're looking for new ways to develop a prospect list, innovative thinking tools will help you useful be able to think of more ways to find prospects than just resorting to the tools of an adaptive thinking style. Similarly, selective tools for promotion, you will find adaptive thinking tools to be more useful because of the focus of the end result rather than more merely finding a people for a promotion, more people for a promotion. Groups, teams, committees, task forces can benefit from from a mix of people with different thinking styles. I'm an effective leader. We'll choose an innovative thinkers and adaptive thinkers when forming a group of adaptive thinking. Keep innovative thinkers in touch with the reality of the paradigm. Innovative thinkers help adaptive thinkers see beyond the individual steps of a plan. Adaptive thinkers keep innovative thinkers goal-oriented and make sure the project is completed. In other words, the two thinking styles complement each other. Pitfalls to avoid. When using tools, techniques to develop your thinking skills, be aware of the following pitfalls. Time. When pressed for time in high stress situations, rely to the try and tested tools and techniques to get fast results. Use the tools and techniques which you have already time to experiment, which you have time to experiment, possibly need just time to mistakes to correct mistakes may be occurring when you learn something new. It's always worked in the past. If it's always worked in the past, just because familiar technique or strategy has worked in the past doesn't necessarily mean it will work in the future. One constant is business has changed, and change usually occurs when you least expect it. Rules can change. When they do, you can be ready for it and have yourself rehearsed with new techniques and strategies. Effect of results. Effective results. When learning how to use new tools or techniques, work on problems, have a little effect on your workplace, start them small decisions, file organizing, parking assignments, recreational events. Before taking on big ones like company organizations, chase the personal policies and changing marketing strategies. This will provide you for a way to perfect and adapt your newfound thinking tools and techniques for your way of affecting on your results. The paradigm is know your paradigm. Some paradigms are more willing and capable than others to accept used to use new tools and techniques. You may need to prove to others that a new thinking tool is useful in small tasks before tackling major projects. Then you can encourage others to use powerful thinking tools. The summary is this chapter has made aware of the dominant thinking style you learn in characteristics and adaptive thinkers and innovative thinkers and the importance of balancing the two thinking styles. You've discovered some of the pitfalls and you may encounter when attempting to use these new thinking tools and techniques. In chapter three, you'll learn the differences between problem solving, opportunity thinking, and decision making, and how you can best use your thinking style, you'll also become familiar with the characteristics of reacting and proacting climates and begin to use the friends and frustrators tool. The friends and frustrators tool. Chapter 3 Problem Solving, Opportunity Seeking, and Decision Making. Every activity is a process and can be improved. W. Edwards Deming. 
People often go through their daily activities without being aware of thinking skills it takes to perform those activities. We dress for work, drive our car, and use a telephone without giving it much thought. In previous chapters, you've learned the adaptive innovation thinking styles that may have you using uncon unconsciously up till now. Because chapter three, chapter three will show you how to use your specific thinking skills more deliberately in a workplace when solving problems and making decisions. The reactive climate. The work climate of any company is to set by organization leaders and personalities of the people who work there. A reactive climate is a work environment usually waits for something to happen and then responds. In the business world, then, something is usually caused by forces outside the workplace, such as customers, the community, the government. If nothing pushes the reactive climate, the status quo is maintained. For example, for years the defense industry operated in a reacting climate, a reactive climate. As long as there was no need for military equipment, defense-related companies survived and saw no need to figure out what they would do in the future. As a result, when there was no major cutbacks in military spending, many companies went bankrupt. In this reactive climate, managers are measured by their ability to spend to speedy problem solvers terms like firefighter. Crisis managers describe the individuals that rely on thinking skills oriented towards problem solving, quick decision making, or usually crisis oriented. The proactive climate. The proactive climate with rapid changes in business, the role of the problem solver has changed. If you want the organization to be successful today, you need to recognize and establish and nurture a proactive climate in which energy is spent finding ways to prevent problems before they happen. In a proactive climate, you must anticipate problems, needs changes, rather than wait for a crisis. Military personnel, for example, often prepare con contingency plans before an operation is launched. Computer users back up their hard drives under floppies in case hard drives crashes. Many companies have disaster plans in event of a major catastrophe. People in a proactive climate use phrases like, if it happens, you know what to do. If it happens, we know what to do. No sweat. We've already thought of that possibility. If the Zazzle flute doesn't fit, then the giggle gear will. If the Zazzle flute doesn't fit, then the giggle gear will. They prepare just in case. When you're aware of the work climate, you'll be able to use the proper thinking skills. Reactive climates require problem solving tools and techniques. In the proactive climate, you'll be innovative thinking. You'll need innovative thinking skills that help you come up with more than the option to solution to a problem. Clearly, some tools and techniques work better than reactive climate them in a proactive climate and vice versa. Before you select thinking skills, tools, and techniques, you first need to determine in your work climate a reactive is proactive and once you've determined that you'll be more successful in using these thinking tools and techniques the key concept in determining the type of climate you are is before you select your strategies techniques and tools the key concept is to determine the type of climate you are you're you're in the key concept is to determine the type of climate you're in before you select your strategies techniques and tools strategies techniques and tools what's the difference among strategies techniques and tools consider the following strategies are similar to a blueprint using to build a house to provide a broad picture of how everyone's to get an anticipated goal which is the finished house strategies are the long-range plans that are hard to change in a business total quality management re-engineering may mean drawing up a whole new plan and making these plans work requires powerful thinking skills for strategies Techniques. Techniques are the instructions and procedures tell you how to operate a particular tool. If the blueprint indicates the house will be built on wood, it might be safe to assume the technique would be involving joining wood with nails, doing things better and faster with fewer resources than the standard operating procedures of many organizations. However, managing techniques, techniques, job descriptions, and pay rates may not match the new strategies. You need to stay up on top of new techniques and ensure the success in the job. Tools. Tools are the device used to do the actual work. To drive the nails, you need a hammer. However, the blueprints may not specify whether the hammer is to be standard handheld or a power nailer. Because most plans don't tell, you, tell us which tool to use, we need to experiment with new, different, and sometimes better tools. That's what ongoing self-improvement is all about, learning new tools and techniques so we can survive in the constantly changing business world. Facing challenges. When confronted with challenges, you first need to determine your work climate is reactive or proactive. In most cases, you probably already know. But take no moment to assess the situation. Changing your occurring will contaminate the issue. The people in your organization may have changed and the organization itself may have changed. Rather than just assuming that the work climate is the same as it was yesterday, spend a few moments in rethinking about it. Then assess the challenge. Once you assess the challenge, you will you be giving a solving problem or seeking new opportunities for example for a fifth time of the month the customer is threatened to cancel a substantial order if not received within three working days if you see the situation as a problem your strategy will probably find a way to speed up the delivery of the order as you've done this for previous four on the other hand if you see the situation opportunity to improve your delivery service the strategy may end up resulting in a new delivery system
In this example, two strategies tell us how you can deal with the situation. If the strategy is to provide immediate customer satisfaction, then we'll solve the problem with little or no thought about the future. When you use the same technique and tools to use this time before, however, the strategy is to provide customer satisfaction now in the future. The well, question is as well, tools and techniques we've used before will work this time. We may need to find new ones. When we solve the immediate problems of using new strategies, we'll hope to eliminate this type of problem for good. Problem solving. In a reactive climate, the problem solving process usually starts when a crisis is in progress. A solution is needed fast. People react to the situation and attempt to fix it. If the same thinking skills are used and have always have the been, that's always been used, there's a good chance the solutions you'll get will be the same as you've always gotten in the past. And under pressure, people tend to operate in ways that they've always have. Old strategies really produce the same results. Old strategies rarely produce new results. Outdated techniques and tools may be too slow to keep up with today's business climate. Opportunity seeking. Opportunity seeking. Opportunity seeking uses the same thinking skills as problem solving, except time usually isn't a key factor. Instead, opportunity seeking usually found the proactive rather than reactive climate because people are opportunities to prevent future problems. As an opportunity seeking climate is the best place to try our new thinking strategies, techniques, and tools because there's usually little or no pressure to find immediate solution. Decision making. When we face a challenge, we get the best results when we know what thinkings are needed. When we know what thinking skills are needed, as an illustration, thinking skills associated with decision making are present, every, are present in every challenge you face, whether it's a form of problem solving or opportunity seeking. And any challenge your decision making is interaction of these skills. Your decision making is a reactive climate of problem solving or an opportunity seeking of proactive climate. So a reactive climate is problem solving and a proactive climate is opportunity seeking. Decisions are usually made of the basis of yes or no, or no yes or no decisions. That is when you make a decision, you judge the correctness of the decision, whether it's based on solving problems, does it yes or no. If it doesn't enough information, you can decide no decision. For instance, when you buy a new car, and you know that you want it. Suppose you know the new car gets 30 miles to the gallon. It has the cruise control of air conditioning. You look at the model. You decide yes or no. However, if you're merely looking at the showroom window, you might see a car that you like. You have no information. And because you can't see what the option it has, so you decide no decision. Problem solvers are opportunity seekers, which are both reactive and proactive climates. These thinking skills used depend upon the climates as well as well as the activity. Personal life. The thinking box. Again, personal life. Identify the paradigms and frames of anchors that affect your personal life. In your career, identify the paradigms and frames of anchors that affect your career. Identify your growth. Identify the paradigms and frames of anchors that affect your personal growth and career growth. Identify the paradigms and anchors that affect your problem solving in the thinking box, your personal life, your career, your growth and problem solving. Framing, anchoring, and decision making. We often forced to be, we often forced, in, we often are forced into making decisions in our personal lives and careers based on emotions rather than logic. Your child says, you love me, so you let me have the car. Your su supervisor says, you get along with your associates so well, let's help them out next weekend. Your emotions are added to the decision-making process. We may react immediately rather than make a conscious effort to think out of the situation. When we examine the logic behind the people's requests, however, we find that many requests are illogical and we are better able to focus on the issue at hand. For example, loving your child is only vaguely related to the car. Getting along with co-workers doesn't logically mean that you're the only choice has to be this weekend. The logic is flawed. If you recognize that you're being anchored by the emotions, you realize that the possessions of your car has nothing to do with how much you love your child. And you can make a rational decision based on the facts rather than emotional anchor. The same is true of the request of work over the next weekend. Your supervisor has tried to use the compassion for the associates and the anchor to decision making rather than basing your decision on emotional anchor. Use your thinking skills to make the decision is it appropriate for you to work next weekend or not. Avoiding the rut. Some decisions are made out of the habit. Avoiding the rut. Some decisions are made out of habit. For example, most of us rarely make a conscious decision to answer the phone when it rings. We do it out of habit. Similarly, while we engage in the writing project, someone tells us to copy a machine isn't working. You make a decision to call a repair service without much thought. Because you know we're busy where more important projects are. You need to have neglected to get all the information you need before making a decision to call a repair, including checking to see if the machine is plugged in. Yet item numbers of one of the troubleshooting guide for a copy machine clearly states that it could just be a power source before calling your service. Without such forethought, the stage 
is set for potentially embarrassing and costly situations. The next time your copy machine fails work, you probably want to take a moment to think about a thorough decision before calling a repair service. Postponement of judgment. Whether you're making a decision, solving a problem, or seeking opportunities, it's important to have much information as possible at hand. The necessary information may be available through traditional sources, company manuals, files, library, etc., form experiences. You may need to use your imagination to think of the options. Regardless of your thinking styles, the guiding principle is to follow when you're trying to come up with the options of postponement of judgment. Don't decide what you're going to do until as better options are available. By delaying, you increase the likelihood that you'll make a that you'll make the correct decision. For example, by delaying you increase the likelihood that you'll make the correct decision, postponement of the judgment. For example, suppose you have to pick a travel travel agency to handle your company's airline reservations. When you have to talk to a salesperson from an agency, they offer you a 10% discount on air miles over 50,000 each month. If you accept this offer, you'll know that it's good for a deal out there. However, you decide to look at more options. You find that there's a 50,000 mile offer industry standard that that a good deal is to get a uh, rebate hotel charges as well a rebate on hotel charges as well you can force yourself to postpone judgment by setting a minimum of the numbers of options you look at for example you'll interview at least several applications at a job before going to the best one or you'll talk to no less than four vendors before making or buy buying a decision positive judgment when moving towards a goal you'll probably need to make a number of decisions in doing so follow the pro the follow the principle of positive judgment positive judgment which means looking for the best alternatives by using positive judgment selections, the best alternatives from among sometimes overwhelming numbers will usually find three of acceptable choices. This smaller group represents good alternatives from which you can select the best option. The remaining good alternatives can be saved for a future serves gateways to a new opportunities. You use a lot of mental energy when you pr pr produce all those alternatives, although many of them can't be used at this time. Keep them handy so that when similar problems come up, you can have a start from scratch. And you don't have to start from scratch. This strategy will help you be more productive. For example, when planning to make a to buy a new phone system for your office, you look at all the systems available, decision time, choosing the best one that meets your needs instead of rejecting the others. This uh, is a ways of phone systems you pick no longer is available, or your vendor is no longer in business, and you still have a list of good phone systems. Most people are familiar with the process elimination when you face with a number of possibilities. Some people choose by eliminating the worst alternative, then the next worst, then the next so on until they are left with the least worst alternative some choice. By looking at the negative characteristics of available options, therefore labeling all the options as poor, the process of elimination is opposite of positive judgment, which serves all available options for the future use. In general, adaption thinkers are usually better at selecting alternatives than innovative thinkers because they enjoy direct, structured decisions. Innovative thinkers, on the other hand, like to look for options. Therefore, they need to use adaptive thinking tools and techniques to more quickly and successful results. In the thinking box, with the thinking box you have your personal life. To identify times in your personal life when you should, one, postpone judgment, or two, use positive judgment in your personal life. In your career, uh, identify times in your workplace when you should, one, postpone judgment, or two, use a positive judgment. Thinking box. Number three, in problem solving, identify times in problem solving when you should, one, postpone judgment, or two, use positive judgment. Number four, growth. Identify times in your personal growth when you should postpone judgment or use positive judgment. The thinking box in your personal life, career, growth, and problem solving. Friends and frustrators tool. When you apply your thinking skills to a problem, you will encounter situations, objects, events, people who will encourage you to think of new ways to help your own devoirs. At the same time, you also discover situations, objects, events, people who are intentionally or unintentionally getting in the way. To improve your chances of success, you need to identify not only friends who will help you, but also those around you who should frustrate you. The friends who are frustrator tools provides a way to identify your helpers and hinderers. Prepare a list of people's things, places, and situations that can, inf that can influence your thinking and encourage you to prove your abilities. Then you prepare your second list of people, things, places, situations that are likely to hinder your development, toss unwanted anchors in your direction. Depending on the circumstances, you may want to find some time it will appear on both lists. The chart on page 45 presents a friends and frustrators tool. Practice or rehearsal. Throughout this book, you will see references of practice and rehearsal. Practice means repeatedly performing drills and exercises and becoming good in particular skills and result usually the habit allows you to perform activities with little or no thought. Rehearsal means preparing for the performance and the presentation of a particular activity. When you rehearse on an activity, you plan for slight changes along the path to your desired results. For example, a word processor learns keyboarding skills and extensive practice because of the essential of the motor skills involved becoming automatic. No thought should be needed to strike the correct keys then when speed is required. Chapter 4. The Rethinking Model Inside each person there is a wonderful capacity to reflect on the information that the various sense organs register and to direct and control these experiences. Mahali 
Many companies do things in similar ways. For example, the Long Range Planning Committee writes a broad statement that tells everyone where the company is headed. Company leaders and corporate trainers motivate employees to do it better. The research and development department creates new products. Managers and decisions inside the company and customer service reps take care of problems outside the company. Similarly, as individuals, as we have followed the recommendations of time management experts and allowed and allocated blocks of time in our already busy schedule for long range planning, personal development and motivational reading, listening to coworkers' suggestions on new ways to do things, making decisions on how to meet company goals and how to spend the rest of our time. We need to rethink how we work. The competition is getting stronger and smarter. Our customers are getting more educated and they expect to do more with less. When we make decisions, we need to have a broader view of how and of how we think and what happens as a result of our thinking. In the past, we've learned to separate our tasks and responsibilities. Today, in order to work smarter, we need to learn how to I would learn how our thinking abilities are related to how you think in a way of producing more with less. The rethinking model. Strategic thinking, power thinking, creative thinking, analytical thinking. You have to use strategic thinking, power thinking, creative thinking, analytical thinking all together. And the challenge. Use all of these type of thinkings against the challenge. Analytical thinking, strategic thinking, power thinking, creative thinking. We can no longer say I'm going to plan for the future so I'll, I'll think strategically. The boss wants new ideas. It'll take a few minutes to think imaginatively. Each of the types of thinking skills is connected to the others and when we are faced with a challenge that we need to employ all types of thinking at the same time in order to be successful. Types of thinking skills. Each of the thinking skills and specific tools and techniques will be discussed in the following chapters. The power of innovative thinking. However, to whet your appetite, here's a preview of the four types of thinking skills. Number one, strategic thinking is the thinking skill we use when we are thinking about planning for the future. It connects today with tomorrow in an organized way and sets a course of action. Strategic thinking. Power thinking. Power thinking concentrates on the positive ingredients of any situation and helps us around and helps us get around barriers on our own way to planning for the future and making correct decisions. Power thinking concentrates on positive ingredients of any situation and helps us get around barriers on get around barriers on our way of planning for the future and making correct decisions. Creative thinking. Creative thinking gives us a way to look at, look at the future and solution from a fresh angle. It's a thinking skill that will get us around always thinking the same way rut. Creative thinking. Analytical thinking. Analytical thinking is necessary for us to stay organized while we look for answers that will make us successful. Analytical thinking. Connection of these types of thinking. Because the different types of thinking skills work together and make right decisions, we need to be aware of them no matter what the problem is we are trying to solve. Be aware of all types of thinking. For example, if we need to develop a long-range plan for strategic thinking skills, are needed to develop a plan of action. Power thinking skills will help us defeat negative roadblocks. Creative thinking gives us in many possible solutions, while analytical thinking skills help us come up with the best possible plan of action. Summary. In this chapter, you learn four types of thinking skills, how they are related. You also learn that it is necessary to use all four at one time. In the next chapter, you will learn in detail about strategic thinking and the tools and techniques to use. Chapter 5, Strategic Thinking. Discovering what you want in life can be facilitated by the process of setting goals. Shakti Gawan. What is strategic thinking? Strategic means planning for the future, and strategical thinking is thinking about planning for the future. When you know where you're going, what you're going, and you're going to how to get there, you will get there successfully. And strategic thinking tools will give you the where, why, and how. Successful people learn to use their thinking skills so that their actions will go will not go astray, but will lead to a desired goal. The four drivers of strategic thinking. To some people, strategic planning means to go and go for it. When you know what the you know what makes strategic thinking happen you cannot just go for it you can successfully achieve your goals you can not only just go for it but you can also successfully achieve your goals the drivers of strategic thinking are vision resources values assumptions yours and your organizations again the drivers of strategic thinking strategic thinking you have to have your vision strategic thinking you have to have your resources you have to have your values and then your assumptions yours and your organizations Vision. Your picture of the future may be very clear to you. You might see yourself obtaining a tangible asset. A new company car might even be something that you can't see, feel, or touch, such as a high employee morale. You need a state of vision is clear, concise terms that you can measure so that you can tell when it can become a reality. Good physical health is a marvelous goal. However, you need a way to know when you're in good physical health. For example, you might say that you're in good physical health when you run two miles in 10 minutes and do 50 sit-ups maintaining your ideal weight for three months. 
Case Study 5-1. Steve senses frustration and poor attitude among the people in his department. He knows that something needs to change, so he envisions his department as a place with high employee morale. His mental picture includes smiling faces, friendly people, having a good time, and everyone willing to go that extra mile to help keep customers happy. Although Steve's vision is very clear to him, the vision is difficult to attain because he hasn't stated it in terms that can be easily measured. Steve needs to include a standard that will let him and those in his department morale show if it has improved. For example, he might include the following in his vision statement. No tardy employees during the next month. 100% participation in the company's picnic or a 5% increase in the productivity quality in his product with no customer complaints. Your vision gives you in a direction. It, it needs to be stated so that others will understand the goal or the plan. A fuzzy cloud wandering through the sky without a soldier board it will break up and disappear. Your vision needs to be contained before you can grab it. Resources. The resources available to also help you drive your thinking. The resources could include money. Is money available so you can get it to your vision? Is money in the budget? Can you add it to the budget? Are your other resources for money? Are there any other resources for money? Time. Resources at time. Is there enough time to reach your goal? Can you and your associates employees accomplish the vision without wasting time? People. Are there enough people available to make the plan happen? Are the people willing to work on the plan? People. Equipment. Do you have the necessary equipment to work and achieve on the plan? Does this vision require updating or purchasing new equipment? Skills. Do you or your coworkers or employees have the necessary knowledge and training work towards to reaching the vision? How much training will your people need? All of these factors need to be looked at before you can move towards your vision. Strategically looking at these sources expands your thinking and helps you move from a root from a rut to an opportunity so your resources are your money your time your people your equipment and your skills case study 52 Mary is in charge of a medical claims department for a growing corporation she supervises four employees who can process 1,000 claims with the turnaround time of eight days because the corporation is growing Mary sees a need for processing 2,000 claims in a turnaround time of five days by the end of the year Mary's vision is clearly stated now she needs to examine her resources if there's enough money in the year's budget to handle additional cost will there be enough money for next year's budget what can she do to make sure that there's enough money the resource is money is is one year enough time to accomplish her goal the resources are time can people in Maryland's department handle the increased workload will she need to hire more people resources people is a present equipment capable of processing more claims if she needs to purchase more equipment what kind of equipment will she be needing the resources equipment so does Mary have the knowledge to make all the necessary decisions along the way? Can other people in her department learn skills before next year? Are there other people in the company who are willing to help? Are they willing to help? The resources, the skills. When you reconsider the resources, you're thinking strategically. Each time you find a satisfactory answer to one of your questions, you'll take another step forward. And you do this by using your strategic thinking skills. Values. Values. As we discussed earlier, values are located in the frames and frames of reference. Therefore, you become strategic in your thinking. You need to examine your frames and your anchors to see how your personal values, your rightness and wrongness, influence your vision and your resource. Case Study 5-3. Michael is an adaptive thinker who enjoys making decisions quickly. His company supplies fresh fruits and vegetables to supermarkets and wants to add restaurants to its customer base. Michael has given a task of finding out if fruits and vegetables could be delivered to new restaurant customers on time. He had a mental picture of what his company wanted to do and thought it was a great idea. He immediately began to work on delivering schedules using zip codes, proud of his ability to make sound decisions quickly. Michael represents the new delivery schedules and his manager within four hours. Michael's value filtered out of what would be needed to do the job correctly. He was hung up and anchored quick performance because his values encouraged him to make a quick decision. At the same time, his values prevented him from seeing the big picture. The task was broader than Michael's plan. Influenced solely by the values, Michael would neglected to find out what resources for the example were available. Money for new trucks, delivering people, sales, staff, advertising programs, etc. This knowledge would have been made his plan better and more realistic. When you face with a task that affects the future, you need to think about all the strategical thinking drivers, your vision, the resources, the values, the assumptions before writing the plan. Assumptions. When you and I think about the future, we make assumptions. We might assume, for example, that all challenges are good or all changes are good. We might assume that the company will continue to grow simply by selling more of the product or that we might assume the only way for our company to grow is to move into other markets and add more products to our line and add more products to our line. We might develop a plan and assume that everyone in our organization will buy into the plan. Case study 5-4. Ray was hired as a payroll clerk in 1977 by a large insurance company. He had a mechanical ability to fix mat manual typewriters and adding machines when they were broken down and even though he did finish the job didn't fit the job description he would fixed the broken machine saving his company thousands of dollars by reducing the number of service calls when management realized Ray's skills and abilities they created a position for him encouraged him to take an advanced training in a machine repair he became very good at what he did and was only in the company he could fix and was the only one in the company who could fix the machines. Ray assumed that he could set for life with his company. In 1985, company installed electronical equipment. In 1986, Ray was without a job because of his incorrect assumption. 
Because he was the expert, Ray assumed that his job would be there forever. When his skills were no longer required, Ray was no longer required. When using strategical thinking, you need to be sure that your assumptions are correct. Engaging the gears. Engaging the gears. The four drivers of strategic thinking are like four gears in a machine. So engaging the gears, all four gears must be together in strategic thinking for it to work well. If one of the gears doesn't move, the strategic thinking will not occur with any machine. The gears need to be lubricated so that you can move smoothly together. You need to know where the friction points are located and what kind of oil to use to prevent burnout. Case study 5-5. Five five. Lori, the senior maintenance supervisor, was asked to write a long-range training program for the plant maintenance people. The first thing Lori did was to interview the company's management team members to find out why they wanted a training program and what results they expected. She then wrote a list of all the resources she thought she needed and contacted responsible managers and directors. The budget director told her how, many, how much money was needed in the budget. The training coordinator gave her a list of training rooms, instructors, and audiovisual equipment. She asked the shift supervisor what kind of training that they thought everyone needed, both now and two years from now, and were the, when were the best times to hold training sessions. She also found out what maintenance workers thought they'd be right for the training. Rather than write down her own ideas about training, she took time to find out what kind of training everyone wanted. Do you think Lori's way of putting together the training program will succeed? Yes. She has, un she has a clear understanding of the vision. She knows what her resources are available. She has listened to how others value training. Because of her talks to managers, supervisors, and employees, Lori has a good idea for the assumptions about a training program. Lori's training program has yet to move forward from the causes. She's taken the time to, st to use strategic thinking about doing a strategic planning. When Lori begins writing the training program, she will do it efficiently and successfully. When you follow Lori's example, you too will be successful. The thinking box, your personal life, your career, your growth, your problem solving. The thinking box. The personal life, identify the drivers and strategic thinking in your personal lives for your visions, your resources, your values, and your assumptions. In your career, identify the drivers in your strategic thinking in your workplace, in your career, in your vision, your resources, your values, and assumptions with your career. In the thinking box, identify the drivers and strategic thinking that influence how you solve problems with your vision, your resources, your value, and assumptions. Problem solving. Growth. Identify the drivers and strategic thinking that influence your personal and career growth. Your growth with your vision, your resources, values, and assumptions. Connect. Connecting strategic thinking with strategic planning. When you actually prepare a strategic plan, you can be assured of success if you use the four drivers of strategic thinking to examine each step of the planning process. The first couple of times you use this technique, it will take you longer than more additional reactive thinking. The result, however, will be well worth your time and investment. The strategic thinking planning checklist of page 62 and 63 will help you stay on track and prompt you to use your thinking skills each for each planning step. You will keep your strategic planning and your strategic thinking connected when you complete the checklist. Anchoring tools. These are the tools you can use to build an anchor for strategic thinking. When you create an anchor, you establish a starting point or place where you do your thinking. Sometimes the problem you're about to tackle is not clearly defined. To help solve a problem properly, you need to find the real problem. You can do so by using the three anchoring tools. The why times five, the care it, the care it, and the reality to ideal ladder. Y times 5 tool. The Y times 5 tool will move you to something that is unclear, something that is concrete. After you have asked why five times, you'll be able to identify a specific anchoring point. Case 5-6. Jason, I need a new service truck. Why do you need a new service truck? The truck stops running every time it rains. Why does it stop running when it rains? Well, a service foreman thought that the ignition wires get wet. Why did the wires get wet? Because insulation is cracked. Why is insulation cracked? Because the wires are old. Why would why would you drive the truck with old ignition wires? I don't have time to get the to get them replaced. Jason wants a new truck simply because the ignition wires need to be replaced. When you rephrase the other person he said and reflect it back to him with the form of why, why times five questions, you get to the meat of the problem. The questioning process moves from the general statement to a specific statement. Five whys aren't always necessary. They may be able to find the real problem after only two or three questions. Case study five seven. Betsy. My computer isn't working right. Bryce, why isn't it working right? When I try to get the database, employees ask for my password. I enter my name and the screen goes blank. Why do you enter your name? Because I don't have my password. Why don't you have your password? Because access, because access to my database is limited only to a few people. Strategic thinking planning checklist. Strategic thinking planning steps. One is determine the purpose. Two is establish vision. Three is assess the external environment. Four is access the internal environment. Five is establish long range objectives. Checklist control. Strategic planning steps number six. Establish short range objectives. Seven, prioritize objectives. Eight, analyze objectives terms to who will help and what obstacles may be encountered. 
9. Develop step-by-step -step plans for reaching objectives. 10. Monitor the progress of your plans. The Y times 5 tool requires you to listen carefully to the other person. Between the first and the fifth Y, a statement emerges that will point out the anchor. We can solve Jason's problem not by buying a new truck, but by figuring out how we can take time to get the ignition wires replaced. Similarly, Betsy's problem is not the only computer. Instead, she needs to find another source from which to get her information or obtain a password. The Care It's tool. The Care It's tool. When you need to anchor yourself in values, you can use the carrots tool. When this tool can discover how people's values are related, it will tell you to use your thinking skills to look through filters and may interfere with your own thinking. The carrots tool asks you to answer three questions. Look at the answers and you can find your values that are the same values that are different. You can use the information to build on similarities and bring the differences together. The carrots tool. What does my organization really care about? What does my customers really care about? What do I really care about? The carrots tool. Again, it asks, what does my organization really care about? What does my customers really care about? What do I really care about? For example, you might find that your organization, your customers, and you all really care about servicing the community. Because if all three parts of your tool have the same carrots, you can use that as an anchor. As a result, your thinking can be concentrated on how to involve the organization and customers in a fundraising event that for needy children. On the other hand, when your differences and values you may need to develop in the plan bring to people's values closer together, say for instance your organization really cares about increasing profits, your customer really cares about reducing costs, while you all care about making a difference or a decent wage, the carrots seem to be heading in the opposite direction. To bring them closer together, you might think of ways which your organization can help customers reduce costs and build a base of loyal customers who will continue to buy from your organization, increase profits. In turn, you may mean a raise. It might mean a raise for you. Incidentally, some insurance companies are doing this now. Instead of just selling insurance, they help clients reduce risk so that they can keep their insurance premiums low. The reality to an ideal ladder. The reality to ideal ladder. This tool can be fun because you get a chance to play with a magic wand. This lets you have anything you want. Use your imagination. Have your magic wand and choose your ideal goal. At the top of the ladder, write a description of your ideal goal. At the bottom of the ladder, write a descriptive of the way things really are. Start with the first rung and write one of the things next to change so you can get closer to the top. At the next rung, list one more thing that needs to happen so you're changing so you're soon up the ladder. And if the ideal is too far from real reality, you could take some rungs out. If the ideal is too far away from reality and as many rungs as you need, each rung of the ladder becomes an anchor for steps, objectives that lead you to your ideal goal. Each rung forces you to think through barriers that may have you kept from moving forward your ideal goal. Reality to ideal ladder. Your ideal on top and your reality is where you are at the bottom. For example, suppose your ideal goal is to get to college degree in marketing. In reality, you have about three semesters of college credits. The top rung would lead to getting my degree. The bottom rung is reality to ideal ladder. Might be labeled how many courses do I need. The next rung could be labeled when I can take a course as I need. The third rung, what's available to help me pay for my intuition. The last rung before the top could read is do I register? When you have answers to your questions, you have moved closer to your ideal goal. The thinking box. Personal life, career, growth, problem solving. The thinking box. Identify situations in your personal life when you will use the Y times 5 and the carrots and the ready to ideal ladder in your personal life. Use the Y times 5 in your personal life. Use the carrots in your personal life. Use the reality to ideal ladder in your personal life. In your career, identify a situation in your work life when you will use tools for the Y times 5 in your career. The carrots in your career. Reality to ideal ladder in your career. The thinking box growth. Identify how you use each of the strategic thinking tools to help your growth personally and professionally. Use the Y times 5 on how you'll grow personally and professionally. Use the carrots on how you'll grow personally and professionally. Use the reality to ideal ladder for your personal and professional growth. Problem solving. Identify how you use each of the strategic thinking tools to help you solve problems. Use the Y times 5 on how you're going to solve a problem. Use the, y, use the carrots on problem solving. Use the reality to ideal ladder with your problem solving. Summary. In this chapter you learned about strategic thinking, the four drivers of strategic thinking, vision, resources, values, assumptions, connection, strategic thinking with strategic planning, anchoring tools, Y times five tool, carrots tool, reality to ideal ladder. Strategic thinking lets you think about the planning long range goals. Using the drivers of strategic thinking gives you a chance to think rather than feel when you are setting goals. Anchoring tools help you avoid the pitfalls otherwise often placed before you by your filters. When you use the tools presented in this chapter, you will most likely you will most likely to achieve your long-range plans.
Chapter 6, Power Thinking. If you expect the worst, you'll get the worst. And if you expect the best, you'll get the best. Norman Vincent Peale. Power Thinking may be considered an, a new Olympic event in which competitors think through weighty problems with ease. While you may not win a gold medal at Power Thinking, you can be successful when you learn how to use the Power Thinking tools and techniques that will help that we'll be discussing in this chapter. What is power? Power is being able to influence people or situations, not reserved only for people in authority, but those in the biggest stick. Power is something that we all have and should be seen as neither good nor bad. When we abuse power, it is bad. When we use power to turn a vision into reality, it is good. The amount of power or influence you have is determined by how much people, other people, let you have. For example, people are cheated on by con artists because they accept the power that the swindlers claim that they have. If you tell someone to do something and she does it, you have power. If she doesn't do it, you don't have power. Other types of power come from a person's job title, skills, or knowledge, which we will briefly look at before going into the specifics of power thinking. Job title. The president of a corporation is seen as by many as having a lot of power. Teachers are seen as having power in the classroom. Similarity, a shift supervisor, power over people on your shift. However, you probably don't have power over people in over another shift if or in another department. The power you have goes over with a job title because people expect you to act in a certain way. Given your title, it is important for you to have strong power thinking skills to capitalize on this power. When you do, people will listen to you and follow your lead. Skills and knowledge. If you're good at what you do and know more than others about a certain job, you have potential for a lot of power. How you use your skills and knowledge will determine how much power you have. For example, the show-off or braggart has very little power because people dislike this kind of behavior, a show-off and a bragger. Instead, people prefer to find out themselves how much you know. Case study 6-1. Debbie graduated at the top of her class with a degree of medical office skills in a local junior college. The office manager of a medical clinic was impressed with her skills and hired her for general office work. The office manager told Debbie that because of her excellent school record, she had a lot in the office. She had a lot in the office that looked forward to learning and new things that Debbie brought with her. Debbie was confident about her ability to handle almost any task given to her and showed initiative. When she saw something that she needed doing, she did it. She had the potential in promotion and looked forward to regular pay raises. However, when other people in the office asked the office manager for advice or instructions, instructions, Debbie would often butt into the conversation when she knew that she was supposed to be done and when she knew what was supposed to be done and wanted everyone else to know and knew it. As a result, co-workers began closing the office manager doors when they had questions. They avoided Debbie and didn't accept her knowledge as power. Debbie has a potential to assume a lot of power in the office. However, she chose to grab power from the office manager and her co-workers by telling everyone how much she'd rather be using her knowledge for the good of the office. People don't care about how much you, how much you know until they know how much you care. So again, people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. If people first had the chance to know how much Debbie cared about sharing her knowledge, then she might have had cared then they might have cared about how much she knew. When you use your skills and knowledge so that other people benefit, you have true power. Again, when you use your skills and knowledge so that other people benefit, you have true power. People respect your talents and usually look forward to learning something from you. You have the power to influence your decisions. What is power thinking? What is power thinking? Power thinking is thinking about to create a successful by using the positive thinking abilities developing your self-esteem. In other words, power thinking means using your power thinking skills to achieve your goals. It means power using your power achieving skills to achieve your goals. Power thinking is related to positive thinking and self-esteem because you are confident that you can reach your goal. When you're positive thinking, you are strengthening your power thinking skills. Steps to power thinking. In order to influence people in situations, you need to use your power thinking skills. In a given situation, use the following steps to ensure that you are using power thinking. Number one, recognize what's right. Two, go for the positives. Three, keep your eye on the negative. Four, turn the negative into a positive. The emphasis in power thinking is using your positive approach in every situation. It does not mean that you should go ignore the negatives that can be disastrous. Acknowledge their presence and do what you can to change the negatives into positives. When you take a positive approach, you can influence people in situations. Your positive power thinking, your power thinking skills will keep you on track and reward you with successful results. The ABCs of power thinking. The ABCs of power thinking are action, benefit, and commitment. When you follow the guidelines that follow the development, your power thinking skills, you can make good decisions and successfully reach your goals. With the ABCs, which is your action, Benefit, commitment. You have your action, benefit, and commitment. Action. To develop your power thinking skills, you need to act. The first step is to prepare the improvement plan that will make you better as a power thinker. Remember, the four drivers of strategic thinking from Chapter 3 is vision, resources, values, and assumptions. Vision, resources, values, and assumptions are the four, re are the four drivers of strategic thinking. 
For your action thinking, create a vision of yourself using the power thinking skills. Determine the resources available to you. Look at the values to see lined up with your vision. And think about the assumptions in your organization's assumptions. To get started, you might want to complete the inventory following on page 74. To be specific about your visions, the statement could be a clear and concise so that you will know when you have accomplished your vision. Find a friend to whom you can trust and ask him to help you complete some of this information. You have need to re-examine your filters, subconscious survival and social, to see if they're helping you or preventing you from working in a positive attitude frame. Maybe certain experiences have created a negative anchor. For instance, because you've hated English grammar in high school, every time someone helps you with your writing skills, you get angry. When you consciously identify the anchor, you can use power thinking tools to remove the anchor or change it to a positive anchor. Case study 6-2. Carlos is a good worker, and he likes his co-workers and his supervisor. However, whenever he gets a message to call his boss, he puts it off until the last minute possible, thinking that he's done something wrong or the boss has bad news for him. Carlos has had bad experiences at his previous two jobs. The last job, the boss left a message for Carlos to stop in for a talk. When Carlos went to see his boss, when Carlos went to see his boss, he went to tell him that the company was going out of business and his job was no longer existed. At another job, his boss went overbearing and blamed Carlos for mistakes that other workers had made. When Carlos becomes aware of his negative anchor, he can see it result in bad experiences. He can consciously respond to his boss's request for quickly, more quickly, and neutrally. See the boss can mean good news, too. You can build a positive attitude from framing creative positive anchors that focus on what's good about the situation. So again, focus on what's good about the situation. My power thinking improvement plan. My power thinking improvement plan is focusing on your vision, your resources, your values, and assumptions. Your power thinking improvement plan. The vision. I see myself developing my power thinking skills by number one, concentrating on my positive approach. Number two, using words that are positive. Number three, continue with my own visions of what will do or improve my power thinking skills. Use my, my vision, my resources, my values, and assumptions. The Benefit. When you use your power thinking skills, you have a clear idea of how your actions will benefit and the people you work with. Doing something merely to forget, for merely sake of doing it may have an accidental benefit. However, affecting power thinkers have a purpose for doing something. Case study 6-3. Nick was recently promoted to a team supervisor. He knew he had a lot to learn if he was going to do a good job. So he began to read everything he could on how to supervise people. Nick is learning how to think like a supervisor. He knows his increasing knowledge will benefit him and his company. He's taking action so it will benefit. Commitment. Power thinking requires a commitment. A commitment to act in a positive way so that the greater number of people will benefit. When you decide to improve your power thinking skills, you are making a commitment to your time and your energy. You're saying that you will act in a way with others that will that you will act in a way that you and others will benefit from by acting on the visions in your power thinking improvement plan that requires at least amount of effort you are taking the first step towards a larger commitment and after you complete your first few steps the rest becomes easier positive thinking positive thinking is usually done by people who have a positive attitude who can't who can't see an attitude but can see how people's behavior and hear for things that they say for example yes gives the different message than yeah sure well maybe or one of the employee promises to get some work on time he shows up late the next day. The words in action come give us you an idea of their attitudes. While you can't see how a person thinks, you can see their actions and hear their words associated with a positive attitude. The positive attitude is a frame in which positive thinkers work. When you use a positive thinking as an anchor inside your positive attitude frame, you could put a, a you could put together a powerful strategy, a strategy that will lead to success for you, your coworkers, and your organization. When you put your positive attitude into a frame and an anchor, Thomas Edison, who holds the record for patented inventions, has over six thousand failures before finding the right material for the electric light filament. He kept going even though he meant with failures many times. To Edison, those failures were discoveries. He was getting closer to the right filament because he had discovered another material that didn't work. Edison was framed in a positive attitude and anchored with positive thinking behaviors, those behaviors that looked for the good in apparent failures. Barriers, barriers to positive thinking. Barriers to positive thinking. In the workplace, we encounter barriers that keep positive thinking from taking place. When these barriers are pres present, we automatically react to situations without thinking about the poor logic in our responses. Definitive. 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 If I'm not a winner, I'm a loser. Which, bar which barriers allow light only for the right or wrong responses. The person who thinks that there are only two reactions and is unable to see the less than perfect answer can also be right. Definitive. If I'm not a winner, I'm a loser. This barrier allows us for the right and wrong responses. The person thinks that they are the only two reactions and are unable to see that the less than perfect answer can also be right. Positive thinking response. If I not be a winner, but I sure learned a lot. I may not be a winner, but I sure learned a lot. That's the positive thinking response. The minimization. If it was no big thing, I was just lucky. It's okay to blow your own horn once in a while and take credit for your own accomplishments. Minimization. It was no big thing. I was just lucky. 
it's okay to blow your own horn once in a while and take credit for accomplishments. Positive thinking response. I didn't realize it was that important. Thank you for the kind words. Negatives can't. Positives don't. Sure, I did okay this time, but positive thinkers rarely keep score when it comes to successes and failures. Positive thinking response is, I did okay this time. It shows me that I am capable. Comparison. Compared to Pat, I'm nothing. Each of us is different. Each of us has strong points and weak points. Positive thinking response. Pat sets a good example for us to follow. Incorrect assumptions. I know you're thinking of the worst. We may try to read other people's minds and assume their responses will be negative. Positive thinking response. What are you thinking? Fortune teller. There's no use even trying. I get what's going to happen. If we expect the worst, then we'll get the worst. Positive thinkers think the best will happen. Positive thinker response. I'll give it a shot. We'll succeed this time. I'll give it a shot. We'll succeed this time. Critics are always right. They're right. I don't act immature. Critics are always right. They're right. I do act immature. Critics express opinions, and often the opinions are not based on fact. Positive thinkers consider the source of think through the opinion. Positive thinkers consider the source and think through the opinion. Positive thinking responses. In their eyes, I may be immature. Everyone else thought my actions led to a correct decision. In their eyes, I might be immature, but everyone else thought my actions led to the correct decision. Personalization. He didn't like my report, therefore he doesn't like me. Just because the result of our efforts is less than perfect, it doesn't mean that people have the same feeling about us. Well, all we made incorrect decisions during our careers, and we all have survived. Positive thinking response. He didn't like the report, but she still feels respects but she still respects my judgment. I feel, therefore I am. I feel stupid, therefore I am stupid. I feel confident, therefore I am confident. Instead of using my thinking skills, we let our emotions create a barrier for us. The incorrect logic lets our emotions rule over our thinking ability. Positive thinking response. That was a dumb thing to do, a thing I need to think before I act the next time. The shouldas. You should always keep your desk neat and clean. The shouldas come from a value filter. We may have been taught that cleanliness is important, this, although it may be important for personal hygiene, there may be more important things than cleanliness when it comes to our desk and work priorities. Positive thinking responses. If you want to succeed, I need to continually adjust my priorities. To do some of the barriers sound familiar. Do some of these barriers sound familiar? Make a check mark next to them and which of them you need to work on. When you identify the barriers that are familiar to you, you're taking the first step on the road to improving your power thinking skills power thinking skills in the thinking box your personal life your career your growth and your problem solving what barriers to positive thinking in my personal life do I need to eliminate in my personal life what barriers in my positive thinking in my personal life do I need to eliminate in my career what barriers in my positive thinking do I need to eliminate in my workplace and career what in my career what barriers to positive thinking do I need to eliminate in my workplace the thinking box. What barriers to positive thinking hurt my personal and professional growth? What barriers to positive thinking hurt my professional and personal growth? What barriers to positive thinking prevent me from solving problems effectively? In my problem solving, what barriers to positive thinking prevent me from solving my problems effectively? Changing negative patterns to positive thinking anchors. When we are anchored to negative patterns, we approach situations from the wrong side. For example, when a job opens up leads to a promotion, you can work towards the promotion to one or two ways. If you use negative anchors, you'll think of reasons why you won't get the promotion. When you build a positive anchor, you'll think of all the things that you can do to get promoted. Carl Walenda, the famous tightrope walker, fell to his death in 1978, 1978 when his wife was interviewed later... She said that he that she had noticed a change in Carl before the fatal accident. He began to think about not falling, whereas his previous attempts he thought about getting to the other side. He had changed his positive anchor into a negative anchor with the disastrous results. When we build a positive thinking anchors, we build starting points for using our positive thinking skills and lead to success. From adversity to opportunity. From adversity to opportunity. Adversity is seen by some as disasters, misfortune, or hardships. Opportunity, on the other hand, can be seen as a chance for an opening for something better. When faced with what appears to be failure, the positive thinker adjusts towards the positive and builds an anchor on positive points. Case study 6-4. At age 40, Rusty, a parts designer for aerospace industry, was laid off because of reduction in military spending. He sec his secretary thanked his previous employer for helping him make a decision that had to thinking for him a long time. Rather than to look up his job as an adversity, he jumped at the chance to do something that he always wanted to do and help others. He is now a licensed practical nurse and looking forward to coming to a, as, as a registered nurse. Rusty found a way to work towards his envision. Not wanting to quit his job because he lost steady income, he though became a nurse, he was only to dream until he turned adversity into an opportunity. When you anchor yourself in opportunity, the number of times you face adversity will decrease. And when you seek opportunities, your positive thinking skills become stronger. From negative beliefs to positive alternatives. When we anchor on negative beliefs, we fail to see the positive alternatives in situations. Our negative anchors magnifies the failure in a situation. By contrast, when you look at positive alternatives, you learn from failure to build on things that you have accomplished. Case study 6-5. Was likable guy. Jamie was a likable guy who believed in his meetings were a waste of time and resented having to work with strangers and newly organized quality team. At first meeting of a quality team, Jamie listened. 
Jamie listened to the others, but didn't take part in any of the discussions. He met people he didn't know from other departments who were excited about the work of the team. At future meetings, they asked Jamie questions about the work that went on in his department. He was good at his job, and the other team members respected his opinion. Jamie began to work towards on the meetings. He liked people on his team and then saw himself as a useful member. When the supervisor position opened for another department, one team member suggested that Jamie apply for the promotion. In the beginning, Jamie's negative belief about the meetings produced the anchor that could have prevented him from being a valuable member of a quality team. Jamie once began seeing the benefits of the meetings, he was rewarded. He increased his opportunity for promotion and increased his circle of friends. Negative beliefs close the door on future success. Positive beliefs lead to success from reactive to proactive. Instead of anchoring yourself in reactive climates, think proactive when faced with a problem. Use your strategical skills to look for the answers, not only solving the immediate problem, but also to prevent problems from happening in the future. At least you'll be prepared to take on future problems when they occur. Case study 66. Bill was in charge of a shipping department for manufacturing industry machinery, and he knew when he knew when orders were scheduled for completion and always notified the truck company in plenty of time to arrange for the pickup and delivery. On the day he had several important shipments ready for a pickup, trucking industry went on strike. Bill grabbed the telephone book and began looking for other ways to ship the machinery. If Bill had a it had, if Bill had been proactive instead of reactive, he would have had other shipping alternatives planned. By preparing for the worst, Bill could very easily have handled the situation that came his way. Plan for the worst and plan for the worst and work for the best. Now, plan for the worst and work towards the best. When we reach an anchor of proactive climate, we prepare for future problems. If you are CPR trained, you have learned a skill that you have that you will never have to use. Learning how to perform CPR is being proactive. You prepare in the future so that you can work towards successful results when the situation arises. From a negative energizer to a first action step. From a negative energizer to a first action step. When faced with a can't-be-done situation, some people spend a lot of energy worrying about defeat. If I don't succeed, nothing bad will happen. Turn the negative into a first action step. What can I do that will turn the situation around and lead to success? When an underdog football team wins, people ask, how did they do it? The usual response is, one play at a time. Being the underdog is a great motivator. Case study 6-7. Susan was transferred to another branch office, promoted to an office supervisor. When she arrived at a new office, the place was in shambles. Files were everywhere. Employees were doing each other's work, and telephone systems were outdated, and office staff was putting out fires instead of serving customers. Rather than panic, Susan surveyed the situation, used her strategic thinking skills to develop a plan to get things in shape. She identified the first step towards getting things on the right track. Everyone would concentrate on customer service while she put out the fires. Susan put her energies into the making the office smooth running operation by using a power thinking skills. Susan could have accepted the negative situation by letting things continue as they were. Instead, she chose to become anchored with the first action step. Ray Kroc didn't decide 40 years ago that he was going to do a fast food restaurant in Moscow. He started perfecting a milkshake machine used by McDonald's Brothers in California. The McDonald's Corporation took well thought out the first step for creating a worldwide demand for its fast foods. To succeed in seemingly enormous tax, identify first steps so that you can create a starting point. Positive anchor, place the energies into completing the first step and then each step following until you reach your goal successfully. Self-esteem. Power thinking is also affected in your own self-esteem. In order to maximize your power thinking skills, you need to be positive about yourself and your abilities. Self-esteem is determined by your self-expectations, your expectations of other people. How you see yourself and confidence as you have confidence you have your ability to be successful will be influenced by your power thinking skills when we see ourselves as successful we will success we will be successful the power of positive mental pictures has been recognized for a long time athletes and public speakers are some of the people who practice their skills with positive mental images of success studies now underway are showing that basketball players who had mental pictures of scoring baskets in real practice actually score more basketballs than players who only practice making baskets public speakers learning to overcome stage fright by rehearsing the front of imagery imaginary audiences the audience is imagined to be excited and glad to hear the presentation when the when the mental rehearsal is finished the speaker receives an imaginary standing ovation Athletes are developing an expectation to have themselves. Public speakers are building on what other people as well as well their own expectations. When they create mental pictures of success, you develop positive expectations in yourself and in others. Creating positive expectations will allow you to unleash the force of power thinking skills. Improving self-esteem with success. Improving self-esteem with successes. One way you can prove your self-esteem is to recognize your past successes. When you see what you have done, you are telling yourself that you are good and that you can be successful. You are creating positive expectations for yourself. Use the following plan to look at the past improvement on your self-esteem. In the first column, list the things that your personal life and your career that you can honestly say you were successful and you, you were your successes. It might be raising your children, selling $1 million in real estate, getting to work to each day on time. A second column, those things that you could see your failures, getting your speeding ticket, missing out on the last promotion, or losing the sales last week as a, to the competitor. 
You can start by listing one or two of the successes and failures, and you can dig right into the list and a whole bunch of them. An important thing is you'll be able to recognize your success and your failures. In the third column, identify some of the parts of the items in the failure column that was a success. To complete this column, you may have to use the positive thinking tools you've just learned. Chances are those failures occurred. You not yet created positive thinking anchors. When done is done and the power thinker knows that the past is filled with good learning experiences, here's an opportunity to apply those tools in a non-threatening way. The plan includes an example to get you started. When you find success and failure, your self-esteem is boosted, and you can find opportunities that didn't, you didn't even know existed. Each failure can lead to a success if you use the proper framing tools and create positive thinking anchors. Control your self-esteem means that your self-expectations will be realistically and easily acquired. You will understand that the expectations others have on you are less important, and you can begin to show others that oh, you're using your more powerful thinking skills to be successful. A look at my success. On a chart, looking at my success, you have success column down. The next column to the right is failure. Failures. You know, you lost uh, sales in a 100-gallon sealer to a competitor in enterprises. And then the third column to the right is new successes. I met the purchasing manager, Dennis. I discovered the new weatherproof paint will be good for the outdoor track next month. Look at my successes, your successes, your failures, and then your new successes, which are your successes from the failures. Summary. In this chapter, you learned about power thinking and what it takes to move a situation to success. To develop your power thinking skills, you need to understand the role of positive thinking, recognize barriers to positive thinking, change negative patterns into positive thinking anchors. You also learn how self-esteem influence power thinking. You've discovered how to improve your self-esteem by looking at your successes. The ABCs of your power thinking are action, benefit, and commitment. The ABCs of your power thinking are action, benefit, and commitment. You learn the commitment to the long-range improvement plan is important. Good luck on the road to building your power thinking skills to become all you are capable of becoming. Chapter 7, Creative Thinking. Real constructive mental power lies in the creative thought that shapes your destiny. Lawrence J. Peter. What is creative thinking? Creative thinking is using your thinking skills to make new and useful connections, creative solutions from information you already know. Aristotle said that some things come from something, and that is the purpose of creative thinking, to make something new, unique, or different out of something old. All people are creative, but in different ways. All people are creative, but in different ways. You may be creative when it comes to putting words on paper while in association and creative in designing buildings. Once you recognize, and once you recognize that you are creative, you can apply your thinking skills to become up with new solutions and new problems. The creative process, we often think of creating solutions as something that just happened. In fact, the opposite is true. The mental process that gives us creative answers happens in four stages. The creative process in four stages, number one is getting ready for the creative process. Number two is mulling it over in the creative process. Number three is the aha in the creative process. Number four is checking it out in the creative process. Getting ready is to exercise your creative thinking. You need to get ready to look for new connections. Recognize when there is an opportunity for creative answers. Understand the problem of an opportunity for future problems to occur, gather information about the problem. For example, suppose you were to work on a plumbing supply company that wants you to keep dirt from collecting in pipes. You need to find out if there is already a problem or if you need to prevent a problem. You look at all the possible information you might interview workers in the field to see what has been done in the past, under which conditions and what conditions and what pipes collect dirt. Have other companies prepared for the same problem and have any other companies prepared for this same problem? The information gathered can be facts or feelings. When you are in control of your thinking, it's okay to recognize feelings and emotions. Experienced workers often have a gut feeling about a situation. Their intuition about the rightness or wrongness of a situation comes from years of working at their job. Mulling it over. Mulling it over. This stage is a creative process that can be used most frustrating in a reactive climate where time is usually important. Getting away with the problem to mull it over is often difficult because it takes time. However, scientists have proven that the best to occur after we take a mental break from the problem. In other words, let the problem and all the information germinate in your mind for a while. The subconscious mind has its ways of connecting unrelated information. Some of the tools you'll learn later in the chapter speed up the stage and enable you to use your conscious mind to make a new and useful connection. The aha. The aha. The third stage in creative process that leads to new and useful answers is the aha. Here we connect information that has been stored in your memory and the solution we are looking for comes from us like a flash of light. It can occur within a few minutes after meeting a problem or maybe longer. In chapter one, the power of innovative thinking, you learned about communication in the aha zone. That is when you communicate with others about information that you didn't know you knew. When you realize you know more than you thought you did, you have a, you have a feeling similar to the aha. You have all experienced this step. We have all experienced this step. Can't remember someone's name and when you walk away for some days later for no reason, the name comes to you in a flash? Or you solve a problem right away and afterwards you think off of a better solution? Check it out. Check it out. When the solution comes to you, we need to check it out and see if it will really work. Some solutions are too costly and impractical.
Some solutions are too new and different from technology needed to not yet be available. For example, safety to our interstate highways is a problem. Our solution to improving safety is to place magnetic fields under the pavement and equip cars so that they can ride on the magnetic field all the time, all in the same lane and the same speed. The technology is available. However, the cost of putting this system into place is extremely high. Business travelers face another problem, the time spent in traveling. Wouldn't it be nice to travel could if you could just step into a capsule and instantly transport to New York City, to, from New York City to Los Angeles, or from your home to a vacation spot? While this may be a great solution to travel problems, the technology is not yet available. Solution may be good ones, but you need to use examine before the examine again that we can use them and make sure that everything you examine as far as your solutions can be used if none of the solutions work then gather more information and look for other solutions guidelines for creative thinking guidelines for creative thinking even if you're in a workplace and it is not a representative of a creative climate. You can control your creative thinking skills and offer creative solutions. The basic procedure is creative thinking is to allow your thoughts to diverge, to go into many different directions. When you do what you've always done, you get the same old results. When you follow the guidelines of a creative thinking, you'll get some new and get out of the rut. Innovative thinkers enjoy divert thinking because they can let their minds go any place. Sometimes they think inside of a paradigm, sometimes outside a paradigm. Adaptive thinkers also have creative thinkers because they would rather find an immediate answer. And adaptive thinkers usually rely on creative thinking tools more than innovative thinkers. The four basic guidelines for increasing your divergent thinking are Number one, postpone judgment Two, generate large numbers of ideas Three, accept the ridiculous Four, form new links The four basic guidelines for increasing your divergent thinking are One, postpone judgment Two, generate large numbers of ideas Three, accept the ridiculous And four, form new links Postpone judgment. Each of the four guidelines is important. However, unless you delay judging your ideas and solutions, the other guidelines cannot operate. When you postpone your judgment, each idea is generated. You can think as twice as many ideas for the same amount of time. Also, some people are more willing to throw ideas at you if you know you won't be judged right away. Finally, you can build lists of many potential solutions. You are more likely to come up with the right ones if you postpone your judgment. It may be hard for you to get others to refrain from judging each other in an idea as it is presented. This is where you need to use your power of thinking tools for your advantage. Influence others to follow your lead when they need to make decisions. For example, if you know that the others want a new answer, use the value they place on newness to sell them in a postponing judgment. You could say, for instance, you said you wanted to have some new suggestions. Well, I do have some... Well, I do have some for you. Or maybe they bored with the problem-solving process. When you created thinking tools, you created a fun atmosphere and a way to correct solutions. Others will see how important it is to postpone judgment. So make sure you postpone judgment. Generate large numbers of ideas. Try to generate large numbers of ideas. It has been proven that the best solution to a problem comes only after many solutions have been generated. When you use your creative thinking skills, make a conscious effort to look for as many ideas as you can. Quantity breeds quality. The more ideas you can think of, the greater the likeliness of finding a gold nugget. When you're shooting for large quantities, 50 is not an unreasonable number to start with. For example, as an exercise program solving for the Air Force personnel, we were asked to solve problems which were already in the answer. In the 1950s, it was feared that long-distance telephone lines in the state of Washington would break because ice crystals had formed along hundreds of miles of long-distance wire. The Air Force people were asked to find a solution to this problem, and when they'd stopped generating 35 solutions, we found that the correct answer, 36 solution, turned out to be the way that the problem had been solved. When you're coming up with many solutions, the first third tend is usually answered, the second third is usually in outer space, and while the final third usually comes from the most creative and best solution, ones that are new and useful. Incidentally, long-distance telephone company flew helicopters over the wires, and down draft from the helicopter blades shook ice off the wires. Which didn't Air Force think of that first? Why didn't the Air Force think of that first? Accept the ridiculous. When you accept the ridiculous and you accept only logical ideas or solutions, you never stretch your imagination. You need to get through the ridiculous solutions before you can hit upon that maybe connectivity to reality. Ridiculous ideas are outside the business as usual right, and lead to think of solutions that are unique or different. When you ask to think of many uses for a bathtub or group for a, a couple came up with 100 ideas in, in 15 minutes. One idea to use a bathtub is a pot for plants. Many consider idea to be ridiculous, but that's exactly what a gender in eastern Kansas has done. Unable to bend over because of back problems, he has collected more than 20 bathtubs for his vegetable garden. He has placed the bathtubs in concrete blocks and still works out of his garden because the bathtub gardens are now the right height. From new links, in a previous example, the gardener linked a bathtub with his back problem and knew a useful way. When you're creating lists of options, it's perfectly okay to form new links. In previous examples, the gardener linked a bathtub with his new back problem in a new way to in a new way and useful way. When you're creating lists of options, it's perfectly okay to build other ideas. If something seems ridiculous, link it with another ridiculous idea. It may prove to be more useful than you originally thought. An employee with a 3M company created a glue that wouldn't stick permanently. 
when he glued between two pieces of paper and two pieces easily lifted off another the employee who was a member of his church choir used the useless pieces of paper to mark the pages of his hymnal the useless product is now a multi-million dollar product seller for the 3m post-it notes the result of linking a failure with a need the number of combinations you can create are limited only by your imagination when you use your creative thinking skills you can generate more options than have problems in a creative climate many of those options have solutions for future problems also many of the options give birth to new and unexpected products and new ways of doing things creative thinking tools and techniques creative thinking tools and techniques there are a number of creative thinking tools and techniques for you to use and search for your new and useful connections brainstorming Brainstorming. You've probably heard of the technique, in fact, of some organizations. Brainstorming has been overworked. Basically, brainstorming means you're using a guideline for divergent thinking, postponing judgment, generating large numbers of ideas, accepting the ridiculous, forming new links. The goal of brainstorming is to write down as many options as, as the group can think of in a given amount of time. Brainstorming works best with a group of people who are not directly involved in the problem. You'll get different viewpoints that will generate more potential solutions. You'll need flip charts, paper, someone to write down all the options that are generated, people who give their ideas and voice loud enough for all of them to hear. When people hear other ideas, Ideas, they use them to form new links of ideas. Idea writing. Idea writing. You can improve your thinking skills by using another variation of brainstorming. Idea writing. Idea writing, which is also involving, becomes up of many ideas. Only people who now write down three possible solutions and pass the paper on someone else could group it not in one location. You use ideas writing for a chain letter or send it through an electronic mail or an email. Mind mapping. Mind mapping is a way for you to build a word picture. Starting by writing a brief statement or problem in a circle in the center of a blank sheet of paper around the circle. List the words that you think and describe the problem. Around each describes the word. Write the other words that may connect the describer's words. When you are done, connect the words that look like that might be part of the solution. The diagram below shows a part of a mind map. The problem in the map deals with relocating and growing business. There are a number of things to consider in the problem. Good parking, green space, space for lawn, trees, close to truck facilities, staying in the same town. Good parking led to old racetracks, offers truck ramps and good buildings. The desire to stay in the same town and to have green space is almost met in the option. It is this example. The solution is only one of many. Remember, this tool is used to find possible solutions. Relocation, close to truck, green space, same town. Good parking, old racetrack, truck ramps, building in good shape. The example of mind mapping. The diagram shows parts of the mind map. The problem is mapped with deals of relocating a growth business. There are a number of things to consider in the problem. Good parking, green space, space lawn, facilities, good parking to the old race. The desire is to stay in the same town and have the green space also met in the same example. Solution is the only way of one of many. Angles. You can come up with large numbers of new useful options when you look at a problem from many different angles, and angles stand for angles. A. Add. Not in order. N. Not in order. G. Generalize. L. Lesson. E. Eliminate. S. Substitute. When you use angles, you can come up with a large number of new useful options when you look at all problems from many different angles. Look at all problems with add. With Look at all problems not in order. Look at all problems in a generalization way. Look at all problems lesser. Look at all problems eliminated. Look at all problems substituted. By changing one about the problem, you get a different view of the problem. For example, let's just say you work for a company that makes electric golf carts. The sales of electric golf carts are decreasing because most of the customers have bought a golf cart and now they only buy replacements. Therefore, you need to find other uses for the electric golf carts. Add. Add something for a golf cart, preferably nothing has to do with golf. When you make an addition, you might find another use for electric carts. For example, add a refrigerator. It looks like a ridiculous, but that's okay. Remember the third guidelines for divergent thinking, except the ridiculous. You now have an electric cart carrying cold things around. You now have an electric ice cream cart where you ride lots of ice cream buyers, parks, ball games, picnic areas, the beach, the boardwalk. Put something else in place of a refrigerator, and you may have another possible uses. Not in order. When it comes to the angles, you had to add. Maybe add something to it and change it. When it comes to your angles, not in order angle. Change the order of the parts of the electrical golf cart. Put the steering wheel in the back. Now you have a place for a driver to stand and the passenger to sit. Electric cart can be used for moving people. Already being done in airports, however, to reject the idea because it's already being used. Remember the first guideline of divergent thinking, postpone judgment, is divergent thinking, postpone judgment. Your electric cart might be used to give people tours through museums for rides through beautiful parks or lazy Sunday afternoons. Try to think of your problem not in order to switch about everything about the problem. Generalize. Generalize. Expand on the problem. Make it bigger. Think of the electric cart was a broader term, such as electric vehicle, not just a golf cart. It could be used to move cargo instead of people. Cargo might be newspapers, mail, auto parts, baggage. Look at all the new possible customers when you generalize and expand on the problem. Lesson. Use the angle of lessening. Make the problem smaller. If the electric cart was smaller, put something into it. Make sign advertisement, daily lunch specials, advertise the cart itself. The cart is now a moving billboard. If you lessen it, use the angle of lessening. 
Use the angle of eliminating. Take away something. Remove the motor from the golf cart and you have a seat for two that won't go anywhere. The cart can be used to place and sit outside of a clubhouse if you eliminate something. Use the angle of substituting. Substitute a part will be a word that describes the problem. We could replace the regular tires for the cart with large balloon tires. Now the cart can travel on sand. Lifeguards could use the cart to patrol beaches and speaking out patrol. Substitute police for lifeguards and city parks for beaches. Another use is created. Substitute. Substitute a part of it. Angles. Angles is a very powerful tool that strengthens your creative thinking skills. Remember the angles. Use angles. It's when you add, not in order, generalize, lessen, eliminate, and substitute. Angles. Add, not in order, generalize, lessen, eliminate, and substitute. A worksheet will help you when you're working with angles because it keeps a statement of the problems in front of you. It also allows you to concentrate on each thing you want to change. When you become stumped on one word, leave it. Go for another word and return it to it later. The objective is to write as many changes as you can think of. The following is completed worksheet for a golf cart problem. Angles. The statement of the problem and identify the statement of the problem. And then you want to add, add something. You want to put something not in order and then put some information about the problem or the angle that's not in order and then generalize expand on something bigger and then lessen make something smaller eliminate take something away substitute substitute a part or a word following the worksheet you can also use when you have the work on your next problem check to be sure the problem has been defined correctly use your angles of course define the statement of the problem what the problem is Add, add something, not in order, change the order, generalize, expand something bigger, lessen, make some part smaller, eliminate, take something away, substitute, substitute a part or a word. Forcing new connections. When you need new when you need new and different solutions, use the creative thinking skills to make your new connections related from unrelated information. While you concentrate on the problem, look at the unrelated object. Write down the features of the object and then connect those features to your problem. For example, you might need to cut your budget from 10%. As you look around your room, you see a light bulb. The features of the light bulb include it's round, made of glass, and runs on electricity. Force a connection between each of these features and your budget problem. You can project figures rounding up. Could request to be more real. The glass might make you think of a broken glass, does your budget have an account for limited cost of vandalism? Is that account too high? The light bulb runs on electricity. Can you decrease the utility cost through an energy saving program? Pick an object you could see. Practice forcing a new connection even if there isn't a problem. In a creative climate, the notion of forcing new connections in work as the new connections at work all the time. People make new connections with old products to create new products and new ways of doing things. Visual audio relaxers. The user picture of music as creative thinking tool will help you through the second stage of creative process. Mull it over. Total concentration on the problem results in fewer creative solutions. The harder you try to be creative, the less creative you will be. The harder you try to be creative, the less creative you will be. After you've done the groundwork for a problem, you need to take a break so you can put on the information and put all the information back in your mind. Force yourself to take a mental break by looking at pictures or listening to music. The pictures can be nature scenes, people, food, shinery. From the condition, from the condition, picture must contain any words. Your mind doesn't need to see words. It just needs to look at pictures. Good sources of such pictures include magazines, good photography, National Geographic, travel brochures. Use music that relaxes you. While classic music is preferred to be most, use music that you feel comfortable. Listen to music that has no words, just instrumentals playing music. See the visual audio relaxers long enough to force your mind away from the problem. People in a strong creative thinking skills need 5 to 15 minutes before returning to a problem. When you return to a problem, you see new solutions immediately. In the thinking box, in the thinking box with your personal life, select an activity in your personal life where you can use creative thinking tools. Create and find something in your personal life where you can use creative thinking tools. Career. Select an activity at your work where you can use creative thinking tools at your career. Select an uh, select a activity at work where you can use your creative thinking tools. The thinking box. Problem solving. Select a creative thinking tool that you can use to in your next way of solving your next problem. Problem solving. Select a creative thinking tool that you will use to solve your next problem. Growth. Select a creative thinking tool that you will use in your personal growth plan. In your growth, select a creative thinking tool that you will use in your next personal growth plan. Using creative tools and techniques. The following suggestions will help you be successful when you use creative thinking skills. Practice in personal situations. Use your new tools in personal situations before you use them in business settings. During your learning process, there's always a chance that you will make mistakes, so do it in privately first. Practice in personal situations. Document usefulness. When you're successful, use a creative thinking tool or a technique. Make sure you know when and where. Some tools are best in particular situations. When similar situations come up, you'll know which tool to use because you have a record of your successes. So document usefulness. Use it soon. A new tool can only work when you use it. So you have to use your tool in your bag. You remember that better if you use it soon. You'll have it, more opportunities to use the tool once you can see how it works for you. So use it soon. 
Start with your low-risk situations. Use your new creative thinking tools and techniques in situations in which there will be a little risk of a tool doesn't work for you. Deciding where to go from lunch is a lower situation. Picking a new direction and planning a high risk. Use situations in which the solution will have the smallest effect on the least number of people. Start with the low-risk situations. Use tools and techniques frequently. Use creative thinking tools in part of your life. Use creative thinking tools in all parts of your life. From now on, for the rest of your life, use creative thinking tools in all parts of your life. When you find a tool that works well for you, use it in your personal life and on the job. Make creative thinking a part of your everything you do. Make creative thinking part of everything you do. Find safe teams. Try out some new tools with friends before using them with a the root group. Your friends will forgive you faster than a manager. For example, use creative thinking tools in a plan to picnic and vacation before you figure out how to buy more computers for your department. Find Finally, you'll be more creative if you warm up before using creative thinking tools. For example, take 15 minutes to see how many uses you can find for a paper clip. If you can get a group together, 7 to 10 people works best. You can get lots of ideas. The warm-up has been used for other groups, and you can often find over 50 uses for a paper clip. Many uses are ridiculous, and that's fine. They follow the guideline for creative thinking. Summary. You are a creative person, and you can improve your creative thinking skills when you use tools and techniques from the chapter on your path to successful and creative solutions. In this chapter, you learned the definition of creative thinking, how to use your creative process to be more creative, creative thinking tools and techniques that will get your creative juices flowing, guidance to help you produce new and useful ideas and solutions. Chapter 8 Analytical Thinking Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Robert Frost What is analytical thinking? Analytical thinking is a mental activity that helps us make correct decisions. When you can use creative thinking skills to come up with hundreds of solutions or problems, we need to use our analytical thinking skills to select the best solution. As we've seen, all of the thinking is influenced by our anchors, frames, and paradigms. When we use available analytical tools and get rid of the obstacles that are put in front of us by our anchors, frames, and paradigms, and thereby become better able to make good decisions and build better plans that will work. For example, when you need to make a decision about promoting people in your department, analytical Analytical tools give you a way to find the most qualified person without letting friendships, for example, get in the way of your decision. The rule of positive judgment. The rule of positive judgment. The basic rule for an analytical thinking is to force your thoughts to converge, to make them come together. This is the opposite of creative thinking where you want your thoughts to diverge or go in different directions. When you use analytical thinking skills to converge your thoughts, you need to be guided by positive judgments. The same positive judgments discussed in Chapter 3, the guidelines for positive judgments are, go for the best. The guidelines for positive judgments are, go for the best, stay organized, think about the new and the different, and keep your eyes on the objective. That's the guidelines for positive judgments. Go for the best. When you start looking at the negatives in a solution, you'll find that all your solutions are have negatives. Stay positive and go for the best. Use your power thinking skills to find the best possible solutions, and you can end up with more than one solution. If you are a decision, if you are the decision maker, you could then look more closely at the available solutions. If someone else is the decision maker, you could present a list of the best solutions rather than get one best solution. The decision maker is the one who benefits from the correct solution and suffers the consequences when a poor decision is made. Stay organized. Stay organized. When you close to the best solutions, use strategic thinking thinking skills to follow the organized plan. You might be looking at 20 possible solutions to your problem. The quick way is to get the answers is to throw darts or roll the dice. But when you want the best answer, you need to use logical tools and techniques and sometimes just plain common sense. Think about the new and different. Think about the new and different. When you spend a lot of time and energy with your used creative thinking skills, you find new and useful ideas. And one of the reasons you used your creative thinking was to get out of a rut. Always making the same old decision as you get the same old way. It will sabotage all your work so far for to ignore the new and in the different. You will sabotage Sabotage all your work so far if you ignore the new and ignore the different. It's always been done that this way. It's always been done that way means it's time to change. When you think of the new and the different, your decisions will result in positive change. Keep your eyes on the objective. Remember the purpose of using your thinking skills. While new and different is important, make sure you apply the problem. Apply everything to the problem. Stay in tune with your goal, and if your problem is to find new customers for electric golf carts, don't go into the business of supplying security guards for parks and beaches. Case Study 8-1. Robin, the corporate security chief, was looking for a good alarm system for the company's office and received offers from an alarm company in town. When it was time to make a decision, some of the people in her office made comments about the alarm system. Betsy didn't like the looks of the sales reps. Michael didn't like the sound of another alarm that Casey knew another company that wasn't happy with the third alarm system. Robin listens to everyone had say and let the people in their office sway her decision. She began to eliminate the alarm system the people commented about and chose the disliked by the least number of people rather than selecting the best alarm system. Robin based her decision on the negative feelings of people around her. She felt to go for the best and she failed to stay organized. As a result, she lost track of her objective to buy a good alarm system. She relied on negative comments to make her decision. Pitfalls when thinking analytically. Pitfalls when thinking analytically. We can be very easily 
we can very easily fall into traps and old habits when thinking analytically. When in decision time, when it is decision time, step away from the problem and plan your strategy. Decide the tools and techniques you're going to use for the dis successful. Describe, decide the tools and techniques you're going to use to be successful. Avoid the following pitfalls when thinking analytical. The pitfalls when thinking analytically, avoid frame blindness, avoid lack of frame control, avoid overconfidence, avoid shooting from the hip, avoid failure to stay on course. Frame blindness. Frame blindness means not knowing the frame of there. Frame blindness means not knowing that a frame is there. You may step into a situation that is loaded with filters, you, yours, or those of others. When you know that the frames are present, you can use your thinking skills to overcome the barriers they put up. For example, you start to work for a new company, your boss invites you to dinner Saturday night. They may be hidden frame in a company that says all employees accept an invitation from their boss to avoid embarrassment and make your job easier. You need to discover the hidden frames by asking your coworkers about the unwritten rules. The decision of whether or not to accept the invitation can be influenced greatly by a hidden frame. Lack of frame control. Lack of frame control. When you know the frames are present, you do nothing to overcome the barriers that they have created. When your barriers are built by other people, you need to call time out and check out the reasons for the barriers. When you do, you are in control. For example, you may have given the job to putting in work schedules together to someone else. After the schedule is made out, you notice that the person who made it out always starts and leaves work one hour early in order to miss the rush hour traffic. No one else works in a different schedule. Unless you find out why the schedule is different, you have lost frame of control. It could not be letting someone else's frame create a barrier among your staff. Overconfidence. When you successfully use analytical thinking tools and techniques, you become confident in your results. However, using tools and techniques automatically is a sign of overconfidence. Just because it worked before does not mean it will work again. Take the time to plan your work and work your plan. Shooting from the hip. Shooting from the hip means you're not taking any aim from your objective. Shooting from the hip means you're not taking aim at your objective. And it can be a sign of overconfidence. It can also show that you may not have a clear picture of the objective. Shooting from the hip is just like firing a gun blind. Hope your aim is close and that you hit the target. To avoid shooting from the hip, be sure that you have a clear understanding of the objective. Always have a clear understanding of the objective. Failure to stay on course. To use your thinking skills successfully, you need to stay on course. When bombarded with distractions from many sources, it is difficult to stay on track. Create a detailed plan and avoid distractions. This will keep you headed in the right direction. Tools for analytical thinking. To stay organized in your search for the best answers, you can use the following tools and techniques. They will help you go for the best, stay organized, think about the new and different, and keep your eyes on the objective. Tools for the analytical thinking. Tools for analytical thinking help you go for the best, stay organized, think about your new and different, and keep your eyes on the objective. The priority grid. When you have a number of options, you want to compare. You can use the priority grid that helps you build an anchor so that you can use your analytical thinking skills effectively. The grid used to rank options according to their importance. The options must be stated in the same form. For example, one option might read, spend more money on advertising. The second option reads, save money on maintenance. The two options are not only pressed in the same form. One is positive, the other one's written as a negative. The second option needs to stay, spend less money on maintenance. The uh, option must be written concisely. Instead of spending money, you spend 110000 or whatever is appropriate. Number one, write the options to be weighed in a column labeled options. You are not limited to five options. You may have much fewer. You have more or fewer. The priority grid. The priority grid is you have a sum of scores. A, B, C, D, E going downward. You have your options. Your options A, B, C, D. You have your choices. Choice A, B, C, or D. Scale. One to three. More important, a little more important, or a lot more important. And then write down your option number one, your priority grid. Your priority number two, priority number three, priority number four, priority number five. And scale one through three. Which one's more important? More, a little more, a little more important, or a lot more important. Anything with number three is your priorities. Work down the first row of the column labeled choices and decide which one's more important, option A or option B. Write the letter of your choices in the top left box. Decide which level of importance to give your choices. Write a number in the scale in the bottom of the priority grid. Continue to go down the row of the left and down row B and so on until you have filled out all the boxes. When you are finished with all the boxes marked A, the total of your scores, write the total line in the column labeled sum scores. Do the same for all the other options. You can also use a priority grid to get agreements within a group. Now each group member completes a priority grid and all the sum sum of scores. You can put all the group priorities grid and come up with a group sum of scores. For example, high priority grid works in fellow page 115. In cases, priority grids is used to help prioritize tasks and need to be done tomorrow. When the priority grid is completed, you can see how the tasks are listed in order of importance. Make a priority grid for yourself and watch how it keeps you organized and on track. Make a priority grid for yourself. It keeps some comes 
it, if something comes up tomorrow that you didn't expect, it makes it fit into your priority get and reorganize. The P's and Q's tool. The P's and Q's tool looks at the positives, negatives, and the quirks in an idea or in a situation. The P's and Q's tool, again, is the P's and Q's tool looks at the positives, the negatives, and the quirks in an idea or solution. It helps you stay organized when you need to look deeper into an idea or solution. The priority grid. Get your sum of score, your options, and your choices. Scale everything. More important, little more important, or a lot more important. Numbers, options one through five. The P's and Q's tool gets you started in letting you use the more powerful thinking schools, more power thinking skills that look at the first of the positive features, the strong points of a solution. You have to stretch your mind and use your creative thinking skills to come up with all the positive features, but this tool lets you look at solutions that are new and different. Not every solution is going to be 100% perfect. However, there are as many as some negative features that you will need to think about. List the negative features in your form of questions. When you can answer the questions, you'll be able to turn negatives into positives. For example, you see a negative feature that tells you the solution will cost too much? Change the writing to read, how can I afford to pay this? If you can answer the question, the feature is no longer a negative. Quirks are twists. Quirks are twists, oddities, and variations. When you look at a quirk, you're forced to look at the new different in solution. You are intentionally asking yourself the question, what is it there that makes a solution different from others? The step will help you stay out of that same old decision every time rut. Deciding on a restaurant for dinner is nice, safe place for the P's and Q's tool for the first time. You'll probably find yourself enjoying a new dinner experience. The P's and Q's tool. The P's, positives. What are the strong points and positive features of this option? The negatives. What are the negative features of this option? Remember to word your responses in a form of a question. What are the negatives? Quirks. What it makes an option different from other options? What are the variations or the oddities? The options criteria worksheet. When you have a number of options that you need to match with the number of criteria, you want to find options criteria worksheet very helpful in a way of making the correct decision. The worksheet allows you to select standard against which is to compare your options. The options criteria worksheet. You have your criteria, you have your options one through six going downward and you have your criteria and then your totals. You have your options one through five and you have your scale of one through five of poor, two okay, three good, very good, outstanding. One being poor, five being outstanding, you have to write down all your options and grade the criteria. If you're unsure of what criteria to use, apply the creative thinking skills to find appropriate criteria. Criteria comes from a number of places that may apply only in one situation. Criteria is used to rate select the best options so that you can be successful in your decision making. After you've selected your options, write them down in the first column of your worksheet, then write a criteria in the blank spaces across the top. You can use as many as the few columns as you need. Be sure, however, that the criteria are written in the same form. Increased productivity is not the same form of decreased in customer compliance. You need to change the negative statement into a positive, such as increased customer satisfaction. Complete the worksheet by going down each column using the rating scale. Rate all options against one interior at one time. Complete the criteria for all options before moving to the next column. Otherwise, if you have a favorite option, it will get a higher score. If you go the, across the worksheet by going down the columns, you will get more honest ratings. You have to use any rating scale to work for you. Once you provide it, you have many already. You have may already have one with which you are familiar. After filling out the boxes, total scores for each option, you are using a tool to keep organized and help you make correct decisions. The sample option criteria worksheet follows. Suppose you need to pick up some people for your staff to serve for your assistant. The qualities you're looking for the correct assistant are loyal, capable, never late, likable, creative. Notice that all the qualities are stated in a positive except never late. You never change the positive traits such as on time. Enter the employee names under the options column. Put the qualities under the criteria column. The rate is employees for loyalty rating how capable they are. The options criteria worksheet. The criteria, you have your options of people, one through six, the loyal, capability, on time, likability, creative, you can score that on a one through five. Now, as you can see from the example, everyone received a five rating for the criteria. When you reach each individual against a criteria or a time, you get better overall picture of the person you want as your assistant. Selecting the right tool. Sometimes the hardest job is finding the right tool. The chart of page 120 will help you determine the statement in the first column matches your need. Then select the right tool for the second column. The thinking box. In the thinking box, you have your personal life, your career, your growth, your problem solving. In the thinking box, select activities in your personal life where you can use each of the analytical thinking tools. In your personal life, select the activities in your personal life where you can use each of the analytical thinking tools in your career. In your career, select the, select the activities where you can use each of the analytical thinking tools in your career. In your growth, select one of the analytical thinking tools you can make a decision about your personal or professional growth when it comes to your analytical thinking tools. In problem solving, select a problem that you have solved and rehearse how to use it with your analytical thinking tools when it comes to problem solving in your thinking box. What tool to use when? When you have to prioritize your options, use the priority grid. When you have to make options that need to meet cri certain criteria, use the options criteria worksheet. When you have one or few options, 
Use the P's and Q's tool. What tools to use when? Priority is your options. Use the priority grid. Many options you need for meet certain criteria. Use the options criteria worksheet. One or few options. Use the P's and Q's tool. Summary. In this chapter on analytical thinking, you learned when to use analytical thinking. The importance of positive judgment when you need to converge your thoughts. Pitfalls to avoid when thinking analytically. Analytical thinking tools and techniques. The priority grid. The P's and Q's tool. The options criteria worksheet. Chapter 9. More than thinking about thinking. You know you're both good and ready when you can beat an opponent on pure, business-like terms without getting hot or bothered about it. You know you're both good and ready when you can beat an opponent on pure, business-like terms without getting hot or bothered about it. Jim Valvano. The rethinking model brings together the four types of thinking skills you need to be successful in your personal life and your career. Strategic thinking, power thinking, creative thinking, and analytical thinking. Each is not separate from the others, but rather part of a whole model. Most people are familiar with each of these types, but the key to success is to use all types of thinking at the same time. When you use the rethinking model, you will have the answers you will need to who, what, when, where, why, and how. You will make the right decisions, and the right decisions will make you successful. When you use the rethinking model, you will have the answers you need to who, what, when, where, why, and how. You will make the right decisions, and the right decisions will make you successful. When you finish reading The Power of Innovative Thinking and put it in your bookshelf, your thinking skills will not magically improve unless you want them to. You are in control of what of the way you think. Powerful thinking skills must be in control of your situations instead of allowing situations to control you. Powerful thinking skills put you in control of situations. Take the time to think. After reading this book, take the time to think about your thinking. Think about thinking. You will stay in control. When you are in control, you no longer handle problems in a reactive way, a crisis every time. Instead, you can concentrate on being proactive, ready for the situation. When you are proactive, you know that your solutions will lead to the correct decisions. Your result will be positive and therefore you will be positive. Once you accept the power of positive thinking, you can achieve any goal you set for yourself. You will continue to learn and whenever you continue to learn your formal setting or each and every day is an informal way, you'll discover that knowledge can be a powerful tool. If you want to be successful at your job and your personal life, you must continually seek to improve your thinking skills. You have the power of choice and choice is yours. So think. Think about thinking. Be proactive. Choose to be positive and continue to learn. When you you use your thinking skills to you to get your goals you'll be successful success is not reaching a goal it is a pathway to the goal and the pathway to the goal gets easier not by thinking harder but by thinking smarter may your success be a result of thinking smarter the power of innovative thinking let new ideas lead you to success by Jim Wheeler